all right happy two wednesday happy wednesday everyone uh it's good to see you it's good to be with you getting everything sorted as usual uh welcome to pipelines number six of a 16 so we're getting there we're definitely getting there uh moving through quite nicely but it's good to be with you um yeah tonight we are gonna be learning about, we're gonna be continuing over what we learned last time. Uh, this week has been about microservices and transitioning to the cloud. We'll talk a little bit about data tonight as well. Um, but really what we're gonna be doing uh, tonight is taking the architecture that we have after we've talked a little bit about microservices um, and after we took our mono repo last time and split it up into a poly repo, uh, we're gonna go through and we're gonna, we gotta make some updates to make all those things work. So we are gonna be updating all of our CI stuff. Uh, so we're gonna be learning a little bit more about uh, uh, GitHub Actions tonight together. Um, we're gonna be diving in, making sure we can get all of our things deployed. Maybe we'll switch up our deployment a, a little bit. Uh, we'll also talk about uh, code um, promotion. And, you know, we, we've I think we've already talked through um, some of that stuff, but we'll talk through uh, what our branching strategy is gonna be, what our source control strategy is gonna be for these things. And uh, we'll try to set all that up. We'll try to get ourselves in a good place so when we get into the infrastructure as code next week, uh, we'll be able to hop right in uh, with working functioning infrastructure and working pipelines that are able to deploy the applications as they are so there are actually not gonna be any slides tonight because we're gonna need to be so hands-on this evening we will stop we will talk about all the things but it should be pretty fun but i hope you all are doing well tonight what is up marco dev how are you doing hey it's good to see you bertha banker how are you doing and moot love to have you get a little bit of uh it says acadia spring water uh from the giant or giant grocery store but it is not we got a fancy water purifier now from berkey i don't you know i'm new to this stuff my wife's into nutrition but we got a berkey water purifier i've been instructed that that's different from filtering it's better than filtering it both removes uh tastes as well as particles or something you know in texas they got brain eating amoebas so uh you know mastermind we got to keep these things safe over here what's up richard franks uh no sparkles uh no sparkles in here i wish I wish we did. Yes, absolutely. This is the DevOps site reliability engineering stream. Basically, this is uh, what we're learning. So uh, actually, it'll be good to give you all a, uh, all of you who are new, we are LARPing a little bit. We're doing some live action role playing and we've been building, uh, we started at a, at a brand new company. Uh, well, they've been around for a little while called Pipelines. Uh, this is a fictitious company that we made up ourselves. Uh, and they have a product that rivals the site medium. So it's a site that allows you to deploy articles, allows you to publish articles. Uh, it's called Conduit. Uh, it is out in the wild. If you go to pipelines.media, uh, you can in fact get there. So let's actually, Get over here. We do have three different environments. We have uh, development.pipelines.media. And if you look at the global feed, it will tell you that this is the development server. This is just a post um, letting us know that which environment we're in. We do have staging as well. And we do have production, which is just pipelines dot media and so we were brought into this company this company had no idea what they were doing uh the owners of this company are software engineers uh they are a couple and they built out this product um and kind of we walked into basically uh, a hand thrown together server um and now that they're getting a bunch of traffic they really need to grow they're working on some r d products as well some other things that we're gonna have to implement but it's our job to come in get everything wrangled figure out this infrastructure um and get it ready for new engineers who are coming in uh, to start working on these things. What's up, Zoe Sam? How are you doing tonight? So, like I said, tonight we're not gonna spend a lot of time, we're not gonna go to any slides actually, because we actually are gonna, I think it feels like we have a significant amount of work to do um, to get uh, what we did last time since we moved it to a, from a, so we had a mono repo. It is not, um, the setup uh, already was, a, it wasn't a monolith. The application is not a monolith. It was already kind of broken up into microservices already. There is a front end, which is a Node.js Express application. There is a back end, which is, oh, well, sorry, the back end is Node.js Express. The front end is Node.js, uh, you know, React uh, front end. And there is a data store, which is MongoDB. And we do have a web server just for proxying. Um, and that is in fact, Nginx. So those things do exist. Those are the pieces of this system uh, that we moved from a mono repo 
um, out into their own repositories to start to learn just kind of the microservice architecture and how we're gonna deal with this. So we did have a CI pipeline set up for that um, that would basically just really just copy code down to the server, but um, we're gonna switch some things up. Um, we're gonna try to switch some things up tonight. What we're gonna do tonight is one, the application, uh, when we were working on local development environments, uh, we dockerized um, the two node pieces of the application, uh, as well as Mongo. I think we're gonna pull Mongo off of there for a second. Um, we're gonna add Nginx into that uh, stack really quick. And we are gonna try to, we're gonna learn how to deploy that stuff. And then we're gonna set up the CI pipelines. We'll get that part working. Then we'll set up the CI pipelines accordingly. And then if we have time, we'll move Mongo into that stack as well. And we'll talk about how to handle data in between envi in environments. So we're talking about things like, uh, you know, moving that, that Mongo, um, information, if we need to sync it to other environments, if we want to do anything with that configuration, et cetera, we, um, we would have to handle that. And we'll talk about how data, uh, works and options you have for data inside of CI pipelines, because it can be very, very complicated to deal with depending on the type of data your company has, your uh, your applications use, um, and how, you know, what your workflow is. So we are gonna get going. What's up, Daniel? How are you doing? Yeah, we just started and we are about to get ready to go with our application. So we're gonna hit up GitHub really quick to take a look at our brand new poly repo setup. So not Brenton, we always have to go through Brenton, you know, which is the meanest dragon, the coolest, dragon ever all right so actually if someone knows a better way to uh, I, i've always had a problem with github's ui and so i have a couple different organizations and generally generally they drop you in like this and it feels like the easiest way to get to my organization without having to go over here and then go to your organizations and then find my organization it seems like the quickest amount of clicks for me at least is to click into a repo that it's showing me with my organizations and then click into the organization from here this seems to be one or two less clicks than any other option on the site someone let me know if i'm just looking in the wrong place for these things but that is completely fine Let's get over into this. So Conduit is the name of this uh, application. And we've got front end. This used to be the entire um, repository. Everything used to be in here. We split it out into Conduit backend, Conduit front end, and the Conduit Nginx proxy, okay? So yeah, so that's, that's, that's how it's set up right now. Um, we do have, we click into like the front end here. We do have this Docker file in here. So uh, a lot of times when we're talking about microservices, and it was really funny because I think we looked up um, cloud native uh, last time and there was one site that said something specific, like it's gotta be containerized or something like that, which is, uh, in, well, as far as I'm concerned, it's incorrect. Um, but we did decide to containerize this uh, specifically in the beginning for local development, for the ease of local development. And so, this is pretty cool. Um, uh, so we, we, we have a simple setup for each of these. The only thing we don't have set up is Nginx for containers. And that should be a pretty simple setup. Remember our Nginx uh, service is only there to proxy things around, uh, to proxy requests around so that we can more easily serve over port 80. Um, that's really all it is uh, for us. So we can get that set up now. So. Where are we gonna start? I say we start simply, um, I say we start locally, actually. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I think we already have these things cloned here. And we used the GitHub CLI last time. That's the last thing we did was like learn the GitHub CLI. I didn't know anything about the GitHub CLI. And so it was a fun uh, process to kind of check that out. It was pretty easy to create a repository right from the command line. If you're not familiar with it, I highly recommend you check out the GitHub command line. It gives you this little GH command and you can do some pretty cool stuff. Uh, inside of GitHub, um, and I will I'll continue to figure out uh, how it works best in my workflow. I actually really think it's actually gonna be, um, it's gonna add an extra layer of automation um, for personal things. Um, not so much for uh, enterprise level things. Uh, you'll very see, you'll see next week when we dive into for the next two weeks when we're diving into infrastructure as code. Um, you probably see that there are, you know, you can do you can do management of GitHub and everything through. Um, through Terraform and stuff. So I think uh, that it won't be as handy in that sense, but for local things where, you know, for smaller projects, personal projects where I don't really want to deal with, you know, an entire Terraform repository or Ansible and setups and stuff like that, uh, it might work out really well. 
so yeah so github actions you all know some of my gripes with github of with github actions uh but it went pretty smoothly last time so we are gonna need to get all that set up today um now that we've moved everything so let's see if we can do let's see if we can get it running first let's let's get the application running via um at the very least via uh, uh docker compose and we'll decide we'll decide what we want to do with that it sucks tonight because my ipad is actually dead it's sitting right here i forgot to charge it this is not a charger cable this is the hdmi cable um and so it's actually dead right now i actually don't have the charger here it is actually in my office so we can't draw some stuff out and i think tonight's going to be a perfect night to draw stuff out so maybe we'll hop into like paint or something to see if we can get that done so we can uh visualize some of the things that we're trying to do but like i said i think we should get moving right now so that we have time i want to get you guys out of here so that you can go you know watch your watch the debates they are the debates are tonight um you know and so i want everyone to be informed um and be able to vote uh, properly with it and you know grab all the information that you need so I want to make sure you have the chance to go see that and hopefully hopefully you know it, it'll be less of a shit show than last time I said we wouldn't say bad words but we had to say one bad word they said it on CNN because it was wild if you're not from the US the United States you're probably making fun of us right now it's okay it was a bit embarrassing you know the, the whole event was uh was a bit of embarrassing hopefully tonight will be a little bit better with these um you know with the uh the vice president so we'll see yes it, it is a, it is a bit i have an ipad how are you able to draw things with your ipad so i actually have mine going through a capture card i have another capture card in my computer i actually have two of them but there's a cool application that i found i think it's called air draw and so what it'll do it's something like that i'll find it if it's not called air draw what it'll do is on your local network it will uh set up a little server to where you're drawing on the ipad and you go to a browser uh, you go to you go to a browser on the computer that's showing and it'll actually show it there so you can check that out Hey, Sally, how are you doing? What's up depressing? Yeah a bit, just, you know, just a bit Anthony writes code in early and you know Perfect timing with the raid first off. It's kind of funny that you brought over 69 people You know that is meme worthy, but again PG channel over here, so I can't make too many jokes about it I think it's funny I tell you that so that you know that I laugh at stupid things like that even though this is a PG channel uh, What's up everyone? How you doing Andrew Lane small Graham? Good to have your rollers MSR We've got a lot of people coming through L Papa Pig, welcome, Halt and Catch, Va uh, V Gals, got it. What's up, uh, Michaela Fox, Richard Franks, Moot, everyone, Fixer Jake 14, White Script, I love it. The Endless River Juice Box Hero, good to see you all. Shout out to um, Anthony Wright's Code. Let me give you a little shout out here. All right, that should, you know, see, I'm getting better at typing the stuff in. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Thanks for coming through. Perfect timing. We are about to get on it. We're about to get going. Uh, we're about to fix up some of the stuff that we need to fix up because it's it's a lot. It's, it might be a lot of stuff, maybe. Uh, but it's good to have you. I hope your stream went great. Uh, what, what, were you, uh, what were you all dabbling in this evening? Let's go to pipelines and conduit. And then, hmm. Oh, now, now I need to clone everything. So I'm actually gonna remove both of these. Conduit and Conduit CICD. These were the folders when we had a mono repo. We no longer have a mono repo. Mono repo, you know, it could be multiple services, but they exist in one repository. We are now using a poly repo setup. So we have multiple repositories. So first thing we need to do is go ahead and clone these new repositories. Even though they should be somewhere on my computer, I might've did them from the server uh, from a server so maybe maybe actually maybe that's what we should do um let's actually get into pipelines.media really quick let's get into the server i think this is the path and let's go into development that makes sense development.pipelines.media and we'll check some stuff out thanks everyone for the follows as well uh what's up ozius what's up at the appreciated v v gals virtual welcome thank you so much fixer jake i do appreciate the follows everybody um all right so now here's i think where we did it uh we have uh the back end conduit uh, so conduit i think is not what we need um maybe we didn't but we can clone them now let's clone them locally. Let's let's do everything locally first, uh, to just to make sure it's up and running. The only reason I wanted to do it here is because I don't think I have Mongo locally. So 
let's back it up again let's actually go to the server to do it so pipelines uh dot media is running or dec uh development dot pipelines dot media is in fact running and everything's good to go so what i'm going to do is i'm going to shut it down real quick and the reason i'm going to shut it down is because while we are trying to run the uh the docker compose yaml things are going to get weird a little bit uh because of of what well, of port selections actually not keep it up i'll just change the port mapping uh here i'll change the port mapping and we're gonna have to do some extra work uh to fix all of this anyway um because of the layout so this is kind of how it's set up i think um let me first what, what am i running this pm2 dash dash list to show things that are running that is dm2 and not pm2 everyone new to the channel you will notice that uh typos are my thing um or is it show what is it uh pm2 thought it was list dash h let's see what's in here oh is it just list not dash dash so we've got some things running. PM2 is just a tool to allow node applications to run, uh, like basically as a daemon or demon or however you pronounce it, um, and allows them to run forever. It's like the app forever. There's other ways to run it. It's easier to do it um, in some other methods, but these two applications are running. The front end and the back end are running via this way. Cool, sounds great, phenomenal. Um, but we don't want that we let's go ahead and let's see if we can get this running over a different set of ports Let's take um, Let's take what we have. Let's pull everything down locally and let's figure out how to build this out properly um, I'm not yet at the level of getting all what you're doing. No problem. We'll, we'll talk through all of it But take it as much as you can. Hope I can catch up in a couple of months. Are you planning running another boot after this? Yeah, 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 for sure um so uh, there's a couple options that I'm working through right now for what's going to happen between the end of the, these and the end of the year. Uh, but the boot camps will start all over again at the start of the new year. We'll start at level one of each of them. So um, both uh, there actually be four at the new year. There will be decoded, which is, soft, uh, you know, it'll be the beginner software engineering and computer science course. There will be horizons, which is the beginner specific cloud computing course. There will be level one of pipelines which is this which is basically an intro to devops uh and that's a 12-week course uh and then there will actually be one at the beginning of the year starting that will be um one called domination uh capital d-o-m and that's going to be the web development one they'll all have three levels except for pipelines pipelines only has two levels but the two levels have a couple different uh tracks at the end but yes, we will absolutely be running more. We also run excursions throughout the year, shorter things on things like Kubernetes and Git and all kinds of specific tooling that are shorter than these boot camps. So absolutely. But I still think you can get a lot. Don't, don't, you know, you don't need to hop in from the very beginning to start to pick up concepts and to understand things. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do really quick. We are going to um, grab a new directory here. And so I'm gonna make a new directory um, and I'm gonna call this directory um conduit dash microservice says micro services there we go and i spelled conduit wrong so there we go you know whether it's spelled wrong or right we tried it's all about your effort and we tried it so conduit microservices here and now we're simply going to go through and we're going to clone these things really quick there are no slides tonight those are going to be the slides from decoded's class from yesterday uh so if you want to learn about linked lists and things uh link, those will be in there if you want them um so we're going to clone these repos really quick so copy one you know what hold on let's move this down and go back up there we go to the beginning we'll clone one great let's make sure it's there cool let's let's do back end as well we don't even need to go copy the link because we know what it is whoops one too many things conduit dash back end and conduit dash nginx okay uh nginx proxy all right so now we have our three microservices here we have the repositories for our three different microservices so now everything's changed 
um so you know no longer does our ci pipeline work also no longer will the uh, docker compose file that we wrote originally uh it will not work uh, it will not work like this and so we have a number of different options on how to push and deploy these things um yeah we have a number of options for that uh but um yeah well, let's let's we'll we'll figure it out first maybe um we can do a couple of different things one our application right now doesn't seem as though uh, we have enough traffic or enough complexity to need a, um, a a tool for doing container orchestration. So we've we've chosen to use containers uh, just because you know super popular and it's a good thing to learn. We've we've learned a little about about containers in the uh, intro course. We've actually done a whole excursion on containers. Um, but so we decided to use that. But we don't necessarily need a, an entire orchestrator for this right now. So we have a couple options. We could manually kick these things off, uh, or at least we could uh, hard code run commands in our CI pipeline. That's something we could do. Um, also something we could do, maybe that's the right option. We could also try to use something a little lighter, like um, like Compose, like Docker Compose for now, um, and see if that works. All of them are gonna present some problems. Uh, right now, we don't really need Swarm, or certainly not Kubernetes, or ECS yet. We don't need these things yet. Again, guys, we are, we're, 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 you know, we're only on five, we're only on six of 16. We're, you know, we will get, we will get deeper and deeper and deeper, um, but we're kind of just seeing how you might progress through a completely legacy infrastructure into something that looks more modern. So let's uh, set that up and we might say, all right, cool. I know how to use Docker Compose. Docker Compose helps me do a lot of things um, and figure out a lot of things. So maybe, Let's repurpose our Docker Compose file to maybe work right from this location right here. So we can say, cool, we don't need to recreate the wheel. Um, let's see if we can get it running by going back and we left this repository up and available and actually it exists. Um, this repository still exists on the server. Let me make sure we have the latest here. Um, and we are gonna copy the Docker Compose YAML back out to conduit microservices all right so this docker compose yaml what did it do for now we are going to get rid of um we're gonna get rid of mongo for now uh whoops uh this is not i need to put my um my fmrc on the server so that i'm not uh struggling well let's see what do we want v I think we're gonna comment out all these. What's uh, what's commenting in, in, uh, can you actually comment in this? Yeah, okay, that works. All right, so we have backend and we will remove this depends on for now. Um, and the MongoDB URI is actually going to be localhost instead. So we're gonna use the local Mongo that already exists. There is already a Mongo installation here. That doesn't mean we're not gonna use Mongo as a, as a micro, I mean, as a uh, containerized service, but right now we are not to get up and running um, immediately. So we're gonna change that so that it reaches out to the system rather than the Mongo that is here. I didn't uh, I didn't mean to remove the front end stuff. Let me, I only wanted, only wanted it to here. And we do want the rest of this stuff. And for now, we can comment out this one and this one okay oh ho, 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 ho. yes well uh why don't you use the source tree app i can use the source tree app uh right now probably just because i'm working out of habit um yeah i use source tree apps when i'm doing a little more uh, like nowadays you just don't do a lot of linux administration to be honest so you kind of forget to use those things uh yes uh as you guys can see this is a nice little uh mastermind shirt here uh yeah i got my shirts came in uh this one is definitely overkill a little bit uh you know we're we're the 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 brand nike uh you know we could have got the cheap shirts but this, like this shirt was too expensive i only ordered six of these to see what they felt like the six was the minimum order uh you didn't actually get that much off for ordering larger quantities um and i wanted to see if this is what i wanted i have another order of shirts coming in that are of different materials like but this is like the nike dry fit um 
I mean, I like this. I do like this shirt a lot and I'll, I'll probably keep a couple for myself. Probably not something I'll get uh, as any type of merch, but there will be shirts available as well as stickers, uh, lots of stickers, different types of different styles of stickers and stuff. Um, cause I, mostly because I love stickers, but yes, Thank you for noticing. I do finally have some mastermind stuff. So there will be so there'll be there'll definitely be merch uh in the future if anyone wants to grab your mastermind swag and have a little fun with that stuff. Um why would a team choose Mongo rather than Postgres or my sequel? Phenomenal question. We are doing so actually before I'm gonna answer, I'm gonna answer it uh lightly, but we are going to be talking all about databases a little bit later, but it is because Postgres and MySQL are relational databases. Uh, so the structure and the data is it's related. It, there's connections there. Um, Mongo is more of something called a document store. It is a no SQL database, which means not only SQL, there are other ways to query that data uh, than just SQL as a language. Um, but so we, uh, Oh, no, we're not doing databases here. We're doing databases in Decoded. Uh, so in Decoded actually is where we're gonna be doing databases. Uh, so in a couple weeks, um, let's see. I'll tell you exactly when it is. I thought it was in this class, but it is not. So that's maybe something we should add to this one. But uh, yes, they are different. Uh, they handle your data in different ways. Um, and so uh, depending on the structure of your data and what you need out of your data, you uh, you choose whichever one works. So week six, we're in week three of both of these right now. So in three more weeks, we'll be diving into that and we'll be learning all about the differences between those, uh, getting hands on, you know, uh, creating data, pull, querying data, pulling data out to figure out what's going on. So that is why. Databases, they, they are black art. I don't love them, gotta be honest, but uh, yeah. How can you uh, multi-line so quick? Um, so the way that I multi-line, I don't know if this is the right way to do it. Um, so you do colon three to 15. Oh, okay, so that would work. So you do a little, um, a little like said replace thing. I do, if you do control, control, uh, control V to go into visual mode, but it'll only like stay at the beginning of the line. So you do control V, and then you do J to go down or, you know, or K to go up or whatever, and you get all the lines that you want. Then you hit shift I, and then you put whatever you want in front, and then you hit escape, and it will apply it to the rest of the lines. Really weird, so control I, highlight the lines, I mean, control V, control V to go into visual, highlight the lines you want with, with you know, with the up or down arrow, whatever, um, or J or K, uh, shift I, type what you want, hit escape. That's how it works for me. I look it up. I used to look it up all the time. Uh, I'm starting to commit it to memory. I feel like there are better ways, but that's what I know for now. Um, yeah, that's what I know for now. The Nike logo makes you 5% smarter, faster, stronger. Everyone does know this. Yes, it, uh, the Nike logo makes you 5% faster, smarter, and stronger, but it also makes you 45% poorer because uh, this shirt was substantially more expensive than the other options that were there. Um, and I actually prefer, you know, I actually prefer the other type of shirts that I usually get from, um, from conferences and stuff, like this nice and soft shirts. This is not a nice and soft shirt. Uh, it is dry fit, but uh, but yeah. Uh, is Armando missing local host? Oh yeah, I, I guess I hit you too many times. No big deal. Um, thank you. All right, so everything's wrong here. So before it was building in dot slash front end, uh, but that actually is not all that wrong. Did we change? Oh no, this actually might work okay uh, because it was even though it was already uh, it was in a mono repo, it was still kind of set up like this. Um, let's see. So actually we can leave this like this, uh, dot slash front end. Let's change the ports really quick. Expose 4,100. I think this is the host port right here. So let's make this, uh, let's make this 8080 and yeah, maybe this will work. So this will build the front end and the back end. Let's see if it at least builds first and see what happens. So let's do it. Uh, one, we got to install Docker Compose on here because Docker Compose does not exist on the server, but luckily Docker Compose is a one click install. Let's see, what did I put? 
Did I put something wrong there? Of course I did. Oops. Come on. Come on. What? Oh, I missed a slash. Yeah. You know, but this is how I live my life, okay? I live my life, I move very quickly for no reason, and I don't double check things, but I should, you know, but it'll be fine. We'll survive it. Thank you. Thank you for being my extra set of eyes. I do appreciate it. So let's go back down. Um, but yeah, Docker Compose, one click installation. And so these are some of the things you should be thinking about as you're going through and you're installing things. We should be updating our documentation right now. We should be, you know, put adding Docker Compose to our list uh, if, if we're planning to use it. This might not work for us, but um, I think it will. Um, I, well, we can make we can make just about anything work. Um, and so we'll see how much work we have to do to make it work uh, to get going. So let's see, one click install um we'll you know use it'll curl for you and it'll grab this what's happening why isn't it it's not changing desktops uh okay it my, my key bindings are no longer working but it's okay and so it um i think i also have to do like a chamod or chone or something like that so let's see Um, yeah, also got to do some permission changes uh, really quick. And why aren't these it's really not working? It's so weird to me. Okay, so now Docker Compose should be installed. Absolutely, really nice. So now we can do a Docker dash compose uh, build. And let's see, build path, uh, microservices front end either does not exist or is not accessible. Great. So first problem, we have incorrectly named folders. So let's mess with that. And it's actually really weird being in here without all my Vim customizations. Like it's really annoying actually, uh, but no, not a problem. So let's go over and instead of front end, we're gonna do conduit front end because that's the name of the folder. And instead of back end, we are gonna do uh, conduit back in because that is the name of the folder. All right. And so now let's see what happened here. Whoa, there's a call back during error. No such file or directory. Um, Very interesting line connect. Oh, is, is Docker actually? Oh, I actually don't think we have Docker installed. Interesting, you know what? Because we were never deploying this via Docker. That is something that you need to remember is that we don't even have Docker installed. So let's install Docker really quick on here as well. Docker per distro. Huh, see, you know, sometimes you just skip stuff. Uh, so we're not using Ubuntu, but the Ubuntu, um, the Ubuntu installation method will in fact work for us. And again, you should already be stewing in your mind. Some of these things are things we're gonna have to handle to make our lives easier. Uh, uh, our base computer, if we're gonna, if we are gonna containerize these things and we're still gonna be managing servers, you know, um, if we're gonna be using Docker, the nice thing about Docker is for the most part, if all of our applications are Dockerized, uh, the only thing that our system needs running on it is Docker and everything else can happen in the container. So we need to make sure we're starting to think about how we're gonna get our systems automatically set up so that they already have Docker and Docker Compose installed when we get up and running. So let's get Docker installed. Yep, install Docker. I'm, I'm actually glad we're having to do so much manually right now. It's going to make it so refreshing next week when we start to do all the infrastructure as code stuff. Uh, it's gonna make it super comfortable um, to see how little we have to do to get things running. So, I, um, oh, did I just install Docker? I didn't mean to do that actually, but let's see. Um, service Docker start. Service, no service found Docker. What did it install? Um, what would it have called the server stocker start? That should be it, but that's weird. Um, I didn't mean to install that. I meant to do an update. So I'll just do it the real way. Let me actually purge that because, uh, so you might be saying, why aren't you installing the system Docker? Two reasons, uh, generally 
Um, so far, I found really anything that's Go, that's built in Go, uh, including Docker, um, that is package managed by uh, Ubuntu or Canonical uh, by default is usually comes in pretty old. Um, and they don't play nice with other things, uh, like with like normal uh, tooling built around those things. In my experience so far, this is also true with Go, um, the, the, just the runtime go, uh, the one that they'll install for you is a little, is I think two versions old at this point. Um, and Docker, I don't know what version they'll give you, but it's usually, uh, pretty old. Um, and sometimes set up in non-standard ways, which is really weird. I'm not sure why it's like that, but, uh, yeah, I meant to do the update, but I just typed in Docker as a, you know, as a muscle memory thing for working on Docker. And I try to do this. So then I just need to paste in what they gave us, which is going to be this. And what else do we need? Um, add Docker's official GPG key. Uh, we could skip this, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do everything they're saying because it can be important. It's pretty low risk uh, for us right now. So. All right, um, I don't need to do that. And I'll go ahead and I will do this set up stable repository. Yeah. What, what is what is something's happened? Something happened with my key bindings. Like my key bindings are being weird. That's great. Instead of escape, you could also do Alt J or Alt any key to escape uh, a little easier on your hands. Alt J or Alt any key to escape. I did not know you could do that. Uh, I will try that. That's pretty cool. That's true. You're always advised not to download Docker from Ubuntu. You know, hey, you know, you always never do it. Um, the Docker engine, I don't know. Cause then they also have like multiple Docker packages. So they have like Docker engine and then they have like Docker.io and like, I don't know, it's super weird. It's really annoying. I don't really know what's going on with that. So now we got to install the engine. We will update and then we will install it here. Man, this this feels as someone who's been uh, dealing with a lot of the automation tools and things for for the past few years, this feels so uh, feels good. First off, because I love this stuff. This was my career. You know, I, this is what I was doing um, for much of it, but it feels so icky like it feels really gross just manually going through the processes that we're going through right now but you got to do it and you can't really automate well or i found that uh, I, I have trouble automating things that i don't know how to do this with already or not have trouble but like i probably for me it helps if i can get hands on and do it myself find out the, the the problems the things that are uh that are weird about it and then i can automate it in a much more efficient way but, uh, you know, some people are learning, some people are learning this automation, you know, straight from the jump. And I think it's pretty impressive. Um, my brain just doesn't work that way at all. All right. So this should get Docker installed for us. Uh, we might have to do a little bit of uh, setup with permissions because Docker permissions can be super weird in the beginning. How are you doing? Uh, Hackerada? Welcome to the channel. Boba Lax. Welcome. Uh, Bwag lesson. 68, sir, crazy. Welcome, small gram. Kiki or KK, one of those. Welcome to the channel as well. I think I got everyone else after that. All right, so we got some Docker going here. It's installed now. Uh, like I said, there's probably some permissions things that I have to do, um, but let's see. All right, so with sudo docker ps is fine. I probably can't just do a docker ps, uh, but I'm okay with that right now because we can include that in our build script when we get there. Um, but okay, now that we have docker there um, and docker compose, maybe we can do a build. Um, we probably have to do a sudo docker compose build. Yeah, this is whack. Um, we can also just sudo root, but so our build looks like it's working. And, you know, it's pulling right now, it's pulling uh, the node libraries, the, the, the node runtime, um, so that it can, you know, have the underlying base image to start from, but this is great. 
and here's where you start to decide a couple of different things while you're while you're watching this build uh figuring out um what to do next um can can be interesting so with containers you have a couple of you have two options really uh you can one rely on the code um and build it to run it uh you can uh, your build and deploy process can be that your code is tested um probably built once uh to do some you know to ensure that everything is good to go uh, but you can then deploy that code to your servers and then you can have your like like a a runtime job for the deploy to build your new images based on the brand new code and then deploy those images uh on the server that's one option I personally don't like that option. I personally think that uh, removes a lot of the benefits of containers to be 100% honest with you. Um, the other option, which is um, far more common, especially again, when you're using orchestrators, is that you will uh, instead, take it back to the CI CD uh, thing that we talked about is your build, your test and your build uh, cycle, it will deliver a Docker image. So it will deliver a finished deployable product. Um, and we'll put that Docker image somewhere, whether it be, you know, it's gotta be a repository, um, a container, an image repository, either at the Docker hub or in Azure or in AWS, wherever you have one, you can have your own personal one, wherever you'd like. Uh, and then we will deploy that to the server. This will remove having to do any builds on the actual server itself, uh, but we will have to pull down updates. So you can uh you can decide what you want to do with that i think that's what we're going to do i think we're going to stick these uh images in docker hub on the, once we get to the build process again and we will just pull those things down but the build does work it does appear that the build worked um and if i do a docker compose up let's see what happens and i have to do a sudo and i will i'll update those permissions so it's not super annoying error exiting let's see connection refused to local host um netstat let's see is it running netstat dash toolpin let's just see what's running oh okay so we can do uh of there we go um so we do have uh, 27017 listening. Um, so we do have no listening, but it appears to not be connecting properly. It's refusing the connection, no big deal. Um, we can check on that really quick. Um, so it is going to the right place. It is going to the local computer, uh, but it is ignoring, uh, it is blocking that connection. So it does not support, uh, it's supposed to have port. Uh, it can, so. It can, but the reason why it knows to connect over this port is because uh, the protocol is is um, the prefix. Uh, so if we look at the URI, if we look at the URI, um, MongoDB colon slash slash, uh, that, that prefix is the protocol. Same thing like HTTPS. Um, and so we could, we can, we can put that on there um and that may fix it but i i doubt it 27017 i think is what it is 27017 and not i think that's it we'll check um 27017 so yeah we can try it again um but i don't think that's the problem but we'll see in a second yep still 27017 yep and it's still uh, not working. Compile successfully, remote server. That's the back end that can't get there. Come on, slow down. There we go. 27017. Yep. Um, so I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure this uh, port doesn't matter. So this could be a fair number of things. Uh, we're going to check this out in a second. This could be. Um, you know our current app does match it i don't think we i don't think we have any users at all so we, you know the first app i mean the, the the running app is working right now um let's see if we go to development.pipelines.media it is running and it is grabbing data so we do know for a fact that uh, our application currently on this server 
Uh, there's a running Mongo instance. We confirmed that uh, it's listening on the right port, uh, but we are getting a an error here. Uh, let's look at what it might be trying to do. Mongo URI. Um, oh, it's the name of the it's the name of the database. The name of the data, the name of the database is the problem. Um, it's not Mongo conduit. I do not believe. Uh, so we'll have to look at the code of that listen that's listed on the server to find out what that URI is. I'm pretty sure that's the problem. I'm not running through WSL. Uh, I'm, this is Linux. I'm on. Uh, I'm actually in a in a Ubuntu server right now. Do you need that Mongo before conduit? Um, so yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. That's the. I don't need that. Um, but we got to find out what the real thing is. Ah, man, not having, oh, this is gross. So just so you all know, this is the, this is my Vim. My Vim is, uh, like I have, I have like all the, you know, I have all the cool stuff in my Vim. And so like, it's weird that I don't have, you know, everything available to me, all my key bindings, everything on this fresh server. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm struggling a little bit inside of the Vim space over here. Um, so where is that dot slash conduit? And then that URI is in the back end. And inside the back end, there is a, let's see, an app.js. And it's just slash conduit is all we need. All right. Uh, Mongo, uh, delete. Can you do delete inside slash here? No, you can't. That doesn't count as a surround, but no big deal. Okay, so let's see if this works. This feels like it's better. And if we should do a and up, let's see if this works a little better. Still getting an error here for the back end. Connection refused, 27017. What else could that be? It's interesting because I don't think the application is doing um, any type of specific auth, but we'll check on that in a second. Uh, so Eric.dev, we are uh, taking our infrastructure that we made. So we have some some old legacy infrastructure that our company that we just started working at called Pipelines. Um, they have a they have a, an, a service called Conduit. It was legacy architecture uh, running on you know manually installed on the server. We've been learning how to take that and uh, start to transition it into you know uh, right now we're transitioning into microservices. Uh, we're trying to figure some things out um, of how we want to deploy this. Uh, we're kind of taking it step by step. Um, as we grow with the company. So we've been brought in to do the whole restoration of the infrastructure to get it prepared for some new devs who are starting. Uh, they were actually supposed to start this week uh, in the in the fictitious world that we had, but uh, we still don't even have that. Is SE Linux on? I doubt it. Um, let's see, it might be though, actually, it might be, but I don't think so. What is it, get in force? Uh, yeah, SD Linux not installed. I don't think that's a problem. Um, I think the problem might be, uh, let's pull the exact same string that we did. Yep, doing a modernization. So we're in the we're in the weird state right now where um, we haven't uh, gotten to, you know, we we just got in, we just changed, moved it from a, a, a mono, so it was already broken up into microservices kinda. It was already broken up into services, uh, but it was all, it was a monolithic repo. So we moved it from a mono repo into a poly repo setup. Again, we're not trying to choose whether or not which one's right or wrong. We're just trying to see the differences here and we're trying to move towards this this new paradigm, so poly repo now. And so now that we have this poly repo, before we had a build pipeline already set up, we already had our CI CD set up with, uh, with GitHub Actions, uh, which is a new tool to me. Um, but now we need to adjust this for each of the services. We need to create a pipeline now for each of these services uh, since that old one isn't working um, anymore. And we also need to figure out how we're gonna get these things deployed uh, because now they're running as containers, whereas before they were running natively on the system. So a lot of different things here. So um, I think the issue, let's see. MJS local conduit, my spelling conduit, right? Logos slash conduit. And um, oh, the problem is um, I have to, the problem is I have to, I have to, what's that thing called? I have to expose the port. 
I'm tripping right now. My brain is, my brain's a little bit fried. I have to map the port. Yep, I gotta map the port. Uh, why do I have to map the port? So let's talk about these containers again. Let's talk about what's going on. Right now, when that container is trying to connect to localhost, um uh, to the mongoid localhost it's trying to connect internally to the container we need to get that port um uh, out into the machine um so we need to do something very similar to what we have up here um so yeah so right now the mongo is not containerized yet so the mongo is running natively on the system um and the back end is running as a container so i think we just need to expose those ports um you know we don't need to do any kind of uh, changing the network uh, to host or anything like that. We just need to, we could, we could make it run as host network, uh, but we don't need, I don't think we need to do that. Um, let's expose. Uh, I don't have my, I don't have all my YAML help here. Um, 27017. And I, I don't think we actually need to expose it actually. I think we just need to map it, um, but not a big deal. Uh, no, that's actually not gonna, that's not what we need to do. Um, it needs to look on the host machine. So yeah, I think I do need to change the network, don't I? Mapping the ports, I don't think it's gonna do it. But let's check. I don't think mapping the ports is gonna do it because uh, that port is already consumed. Um, so mapping the ports isn't gonna do it. Uh, we do need to change the network. That seems odd though. Actually, Eric Dev, you are a, a Docker pro. Um, Let's see, uh, contacting, I guess, I guess I am gonna have to do that. Uh, Docker, um, communicate with host, uh, with service on host. Let's see. Uh, I could also, so I could also expose, I could also expose Mongo which, which is probably problematic. Um, but yeah, on a Mac, it's like Dr. Mac, uh, Dr. Mac logos. Let's see, let's see. And if you're using Docker for Mac or Docker for Windows, um, this does not work for Docker for Linux. Oh, so is it, uh, oh, that sucks. So it's broken. It looks like a lot of people had this problem. It does not work like this for for this. Oh no, it's all good. I think we got it. Um, basically, we need to. We have a we have one service right now that's not containerized, and we're trying to connect to it from a from inside of a container. Uh, but we're trying to do that without putting this uh, service on the host network. Um, not a big deal if we do put it on the host network, but we're trying not to put it on the host network. Uh, but what I'm seeing here is that that is what we have to do. Uh, because this is not something that works for Docker for Linux anymore. Um, so map, the problem is mapping. If I map the ports, um, oh, maybe if I map the backend port and not the, so I can't map, maybe, 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 maybe I'll map the backend port. I don't think that'll work, but it might, it might, it definitely might. Let's try, so let's just try mapping 3000. Uh, let's try that out. Could work. You know, sometimes these things are hard to think through, so you gotta try them out. Maybe they're not hard for you, but sometimes they're hard for me to think through. So map 3000 to, ah, we need to, so we need to map it to a different port on the host machine. Doesn't really matter what it is on the host machine, actually. Um, I don't think this is gonna work. Actually, this is the host machine, right? So I'll go 3,005 uh, and 3,000. I think that's what we want, right? It's uh, it's host port first and then container port. I don't know if not, I'll flip it around and let's try that really quick. And then we'll switch it if not. Yeah, so. Single port 3000 and 3005 should have been listening. Yeah, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make a network ho uh, host. But so yes, the, I was trying not to, hmm, this seems, this seems how new, What first off, what Docker version are we on? When did this change? Docker dash dash version. Okay, all right, so nine, they're only on 1903. So this is, it's not super crazy recent. 
at the beginning of the year it looks like is when this uh this issue became a thing not a big deal we can change the network to host completely fine um i have i have my gripes against uh network mode host um but you know i mean it's it's a perfectly reasonable thing to do especially here like this is not a problem at all for our setup again i try to avoid it as much as possible but uh yeah let's do that Come on, there we go. Network mod, network mode. It equals a uh, your host. Um, and so what we, we, we talked about the network, the different types of networking that Docker has, uh, containers have, and uh, network mode host allows this to be put basically along with the rest of the, the things on the system. Um, yeah, and so network mode host. Um, which direction are you trying to communicate uh, pod host or host pod? So we're trying to, hmm, uh, we're trying to go from, <laughs> you're, I can tell you're a Kubernetes person, um, but we're trying to go, we're trying to connect from the pod to an application running on the host. We're trying to retrieve, uh, Mongo is running on natively on the host machine and we're trying to access, uh, we're trying to access that. Um, cause if we're trying to go the other way, yeah, we can just expose the port and it should work fine. I would change the network mode host. Uh, the problem with network mode host, um, oh yes. Bind the public interface. We can do that. I'm going to do this right now just so we can keep moving. Cause we're already behind. Uh, but yes, that is, that is, um, that's good. That's really good. Um, we talked about network modes way. I was going to tell you all something. And oh, what are my gripes? My gripes are that uh, when you do this, now you consume the port and now you don't have an option for uh, running multiple containers here. Um, when you're just running default Docker, I can't run another, uh, if I needed to run, you know, multiple things, um, I couldn't run them. I didn't, I wouldn't have the option of, of kind of clustering them together without having to do some other things behind it. And that's my, that's really my only gripe with, with host networking mode. Um, for sure, it's really my only gripe. So host, that's that's good, Eric Goddard. See, that's why that's why it's good to have you here. Uh, binding binding that should be good. So it's a better way to create a new network, I guess. Um, the better. Uh, no, I th so I actually think binding that public interface is great. The 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 real option, to be honest, would be um, the reason why I'm saying we're just gonna make it work and move on is because we're actually gonna end up containerizing uh, the Mongo service anyway. So we're gonna end up removing whatever we do uh, in a little bit. So yeah, better create a new network. Um, a new network wouldn't really do anything. Um, oh no, okay, good. So this is a different problem. This is not a address already in use for 3000. That makes perfect sense uh, because we already have uh, a backend running on the system already. So, um, but that's weird because, oh, because we're exposing 3000, but let's go ahead and map that. Um, you know what? We're gonna shut now. We're gonna shut down the other back end. We're gonna shut down the other back end first. I'm actually not gonna make any changes to this. Um, we're gonna shut down the other back end. So I actually think I can just do PM2 kill. I think it'll shut down everything. All right. So now if we do it up, let's see what happens here. That feels better. That looks good. Um, starting development server. This looks this looks fine. This looks good. Um, it looks like everything was able to connect. Uh, local 4100, great. The application looks like it starts. We don't know that it's great yet. We don't know that it's working. We could test it out a little bit. I think I changed one of the ports. Let me go back in here and change it back a little bit. This is going to be uh, the jankiest thing. I'm really glad I put, ah, oh, I changed it. The first thing I put uh, as a title, I actually put sloppy microservices to make sure the people were coming in knew we were, uh, we're in the transition phase. We're in the transition phase of these microservices. They will grow and mature over the next, uh, oh, I forgot to update the day. Uh, it is no longer five. It is now, can I update this? It is now six, that's fine. Other thing you can do if you don't want a service running on the public interface is to use a socket and bind mount that socket into the container. Interesting, that's very, yeah, that makes sense. I think this is also weird to think through because I don't, you you forget that you don't at least I don't uh, run I don't run or manage single containers like this anymore I actually don't interface with containers like this uh, that often anymore so it's, it's very interesting kind of thinking through these problems like problems like this
Uh, but that, yeah, that would work. How are you doing, Code Makato? Welcome, Code Cody Val. How are you doing? Um, yeah, I really read Jack Compose as well um, anymore. But it's fun. This is like I was telling everyone. This is like I love this stuff because this used to be everything that I used to do, and now I'm going to do it again. But it is weird. It's, it's amazing how much you lose uh, when you're not doing it. Um. All right. So we bound it to we bound it to port uh, 8080. Let's put it back on. 4100 uh the reason why i'm going to put it back on 4100 is because uh for we have a an nginx container running that's proxying this so that we can still access access it no problem and so if you were to go to development.pipelines.media it should be down right now but you are getting an nginx error you are hitting that nginx container um or or service and it is in fact saying hey i can't proxy you to anything because uh there is nothing running back there and let's do an up dash d get it in the background give it a few seconds and get this running showing people a bit behind the curtains on stream moving some of the magic how they work talked a bit about cni oh yeah that's dope that's really dope um it's always interesting when you start to pull back the curtains on the way things are set up um it's always weird huh so look at this look at what it's doing now it's telling me that this is staging oh this might have always been set up like this actually let me see hmm, hmm. oh this is uh, actually no this has to do with what we hard-coded in the docker container uh great this actually has to do with the code that we're doing so this is actually pointed at the wrong place um huh okay that's fine um that's because it's hard coded right now and this is something that you should think about when you are doing something like this these need to be dynamic values why do they need to be dynamic values um one because they're gonna be going into different environments uh like we have here um well mainly because they're gonna be going into different environments um and we can do that in a couple different ways um and we will have to do that through the build process as well tonight uh back end app.js is that is that where it is no the front end is where this is this is in the conduit front end and this is in the source um agent js and see right here it is hard coded right here and so we can change this really quick uh to make sure our backend is working properly and instead of this we'll change it um uh, we can just change this to development if we want to make it a full oh actually we have to make it a full uh url so development just to make sure that we are hitting the development things i actually don't even think we need to refresh uh we do because it's a docker container and not the raw files um and so how do you do that you go to you just build it again am i still in the right place build rebuild and then we will restart uh, everything what's the benefit of running microservices uh, so we talked about this last time um uh, the benefits are of running the benefits of running microservices are uh the ease of scaling um so it makes it easier to scale both up and out um uh so both vertically and horizontally for scaling um it actually helps um uh, it, ca it can help if you the way that you build it with your fault tolerance so it can allow the application to uh handle errors a lot better um uh also helps with the speed of deployment because you can uh you you should be able to deploy applications individually rather than having to deploy the entire thing uh you know these little services if we make updates to one we can deploy services it also makes individual services easier to maintain or it should at least but uh, there are a significant amount of cons to microservices as well um, we talked about um, one being that they there's uh, an immense amount of overhead in its maintenance um, you know it, it gets tough to manage everything that's going on with microservices um, it, it's actually tougher to uh, maintain the entire system so easy easier to maintain individual services it can be a lot tougher to maintain the entire system because it can get pretty complex um yeah there's there's a whole lot of there's there's a lot of cons uh, it, it microservices are not super easy to deal with um 
I, I don't think they're always the answer. I think they're everyone is choosing it as the answer nowadays, uh, just because container technology is so popular uh, and it makes a lot of sense with container technology, just the way containers work, um, make it easy to do microservices. But uh, I think that your situation needs to warrant it uh, for, for you to be using microservices to be 100% honest. The overhead can be significant and the cognitive load to your developers can be massive. Um, and again, as, as, as DevOps engineers, um, and you know, and SRE as well, your, your customer really is the engineer. It really is the developer. You are uh, doing what you can to make, uh, their experience, uh, set up in a way that they can develop as fast as they want to develop. And, uh, yeah, it can be, it can be, it can be a significant, uh, cognitive load breaking up, uh, things like that, uh, for your developers. A murder mystery of investigating incidents. That is absolutely true. Um, you're the victim. So yeah, you're you're all the things um, in a microservice when you're when you're dealing with uh, um, troubleshooting these microservices for sure. Big fan of designing apps as if they are separate microservices, separate libs, uh, libraries, but run from the same binary. Yeah, that's and you can split them later if you need it. That's that's a phenomenal idea. Um, for sure. Got any suggestions, something on your server that you can watch for container registry changes? That's a good question. That's a phenomenal question. Um, uh, I don't have any, I don't have any suggestions for watching for container registry changes. Uh, generally, um, I handle that through, <laughs> I don't like to include, um, I generally don't like to include my delivery uh, and deployment for containers in the in the exact same tooling of the pipeline. It, it, it I, we'll get further along and we'll see some of that tonight. Um, personally, uh, we talked about the difference between of, of what delivery is, you know, uh, CI CD continuous integration, continuous delivery. Delivery is just delivering that artifact. Uh, you can walk away after that. So delivering that container image is what you're trying to do through that build process. I like to have that automatically done. I don't necessarily like to have that image automatically deployed um, without without some type of intermediary step personally, but it has to do, it has to do with being bitten uh, by a couple of things. Um, and uh, yeah, just not watching for those updates. People miss, people miss tag and stuff all the time, even though you should have things in place to stop for something like that. Um, but I don't, I don't know of any good tools for that. Kubernetes, Flux can do it. That's cool, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Teacher who breaks things down without condescending his students. Oh, I, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm never going to. I'm, I mean, I, I'll do my best never to sound condescending. I'm never going to actively be condescending to anyone. I'll break it down the best that I can. I also don't know everything, and you all know I'll say, hey, I do not know what that is. Please send me a link <laughs> so that I can learn what that thing is. But absolutely, I'll give you what I know. Uh, and then I'll ask that you all give me what you know because I learned a lot from you all as well. Okay, so this, uh, we built it and uh, what is it? Docker Compose Restart uh, front end. I get, can I give it a, a service? Is that what I can do with this? Oh, a sudo, so sudo, bang, bang. Oh, I'm remembering stuff. It's all, you know, it's still there. It's still there, you know, the rust just has to be knocked off. Um, we're starting microservices front end. We needed to restart the front end because we needed to change the URL that it was using. So, uh, using Docker Compose, if we refresh it, is it broken? N um, yeah, it's, uh, it still says this is staging for development.pipelines.media. Let me make sure I didn't switch up staging and or that actually could be, hold on, that could be caching. Let's let's make sure. No, it still says staging. Very, very interesting. Uh, there are a couple things we can do to check that and to make sure that's not being weird. Um, BIM conduit front end. And we modified, what do we modify? The Docker, oh, no. Source. Um, agent JS. We changed it to development. Very interesting. 
and it seems to still be pulling staging data even though we rebuilt it oh because the restart does the restart not oh maybe the restart just restarts the container and doesn't actually okay so let me do a let me do a sudo docker compose down and then i will do an up just to confirm that everything got wiped out that'll be good for us to know these are little things that uh that really help to know um does a docker compose restart uh not i assumed if i rebuilt and then restarted the container uh, uh well that makes sense that it, it, i thought it would use the new thing but if i'm restarting that container it's actually going to restart the same instance of that container and that would not work so this should work now uh i don't i don't think so i don't think i have to do a force uh rebuild um i think i just had to do a down and an up i think but we're gonna find out real fast and i should refresh this and it is development now perfect so it's pointed at the right thing uh we we, we do have things working properly um cool so now that we got that working we got to think through some ways you know all right we can use docker compose to make things work that sounds good. Our original, our very basic pipeline uh, right up front was to simply uh, use Git to get the new code. So our pipeline would uh, start, it would pull down the code, it would run a test or two. I think it was gonna run some some jest tests or something uh, that were in there already. Uh, they are failing already because we didn't write any of these. I don't really know what's going on with them, um, but it runs the tests like it's supposed to. And then it, uh, it, it actually SSHs into the server and it clones, it does a pull basically on the repo and that gets all of the updates. So now we need to do something uh we need, we need to change this up uh so that it works and again we don't need to go to level 10 uh because we are absolutely our build pipeline right now is level one it is it is a level one or level two build pipeline it is absolutely the basics the bare bones uh but we can take that on and we can continue to build upon that so now you know we have docker compose which will allow us to do this i think we'll actually be able to set this up pretty quickly uh and then we can move on to nginx so here is what we are going to do i'm going to copy um, I'm gonna copy dot dot slash conduit, um, slash dot GitHub, slash workflows, npm publish. I'm gonna copy, actually, I'm just gonna copy this workflows. I'm gonna copy this dot GitHub folder here. I don't know what else is in there, but let's just see this. You probably shouldn't do this. But, uh, you know, we're having, I mean, we're making things easier on ourselves really quick. Uh, so we're using GitHub Actions um, and GitHub Actions uses a YAML file that's located in this, this hidden GitHub folder. Um, is there anything else in here? There is not. Um, okay, so actually we can't even have this here. We need to have one of these in, inside of each of the, um, inside of each of the repositories. Because remember, we need each of them to be picked up by their own Thing to kick off the pipeline but uh, i just wanted to move it here so i could see what was in it because i don't remember i have no idea what we have in this and so right now we are deploying on the master branch or this is building at least on the master branch the staging branch and the development branch and that's how we're determining where this thing goes well we're not really doing it yet right now i think it's all pushing to staging or something by default um or it's not pushing anywhere do we not do that part Great job, it's building. This looks old. Maybe I didn't pull. Um, uh, get branch, is this not master? Or, oh no, oh, we did all that on the staging branch. Check this out. Check this out. I remember that. I think we'll stash this. Not a big deal. We're not working in this directory anymore. Staging. Now, if you look at this, dot GitHub, workflows, npm publish, a lot longer now. Um, and so it logs in, uh, we have some extra stuff in here that we can remove, um, but it logs in, it's using it's using our secrets. Uh, so we use the secrets that are in the repo. Um, and uh, we were gonna put in some, we were gonna, the last thing we were gonna do is put in some logic to be able to determine which environment to send this stuff to. So now we need to do, uh, we need to take that and do these things. So here's what we're gonna do first. Let's see if we can set this up with our, uh, let's do it with our front end first, okay? 
Um, let's see, CD conduit dash microservices. Um, let us go into our front end conduit. Let's actually remove, let's clean this up. So I'm not confused later, cause I will be confused later. CD conduit uh, front end. And you know what I'm actually gonna do? I am going to take, I'm gonna cat, I'm actually gonna copy it and paste it. I'm actually gonna uh, implement the workflow from GitHub. Uh, the reason I'm gonna implement it from GitHub is because I've I've only ever used GitHub Actions really when we did it, and I don't know if it's gonna pick it up automatically. Um, I assume there's probably some setup that I have to do inside of the repository as well. So let's do that. So conduit front end. And um, let's set up a, an action. And they have this default workflow that we can use. I can click set up this workflow just to grab, you know, a normal one or just a base image of one. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, you know, go to GitHub again, go to Conduit CI CD. Oh, that was the test repo. I gotta clean up these repositories like big time. Conduit. Let's go to staging because this is all in a weird place. And let's grab, let's actually grab the contents of this file and let's just paste it on in. Again, uh, you know, it's it's just a YAML file. We'll raw grab this, copy. How you doing lower than noob? Welcome to the channel. You're not lower than noob to me. Uh, there are no noobs here. There are just people that are new to this, but no noobs. No noobs at all. Uh, noobs are for Halo. Uh, so if, we wanna, if you ever wanna play any Halo, uh, you are in fact a noob when we get there. Everyone's a noob when you get there, uh, except for me, because I'm the greatest. Uh, same thing when it comes to Call of Duty. Same thing when it comes to Overwatch. Same thing when it comes to any game where you can lose. Uh, I'm the winner and you are, pro unless you're on my team, you are the noob, okay? So, you know, no noobs here, but you are lower than a noob at all the games. I'm sorry to tell you that. I hope that doesn't hurt your feelings, but uh, you know, we have to be honest here and we have to speak complete truth. Uh, all right, so what was I doing? I forgot that fast. <laughs> Let's see, I was, oh, I was uh, grabbing all that information to put into this file here. Diablo 2, I'm okay, I'm a, I'm a noob, I'm a noob at Diablo 2 uh, for sure. I, I don't even think, I've never even played Diablo 2. I played a lot of Diablo 3. Diablo seemed like a game I wasn't gonna like, and I had an amazing time uh, playing Diablo 3. Um, I actually started playing Diablo 3 when I worked at Zenimax Media, and I just wanted a game because I only worked the weekends, and I was like free all week, and I was like, I really wanna start gaming again, and I started playing Diablo 3 on the Xbox, actually, and played it a ton, and then I found that everyone played it on PC, so then I bought it for PC, but yes. I can teach you how to conduct a pen test hack and you can feel like a noob. I, I, I will absolutely feel like a noob. And you can absolutely, I absolutely would love for you to do that. If you want to, we can set, absolutely set up some time for that. Uh, I, but I will feel like a noob for sure. Okay, we need to change this, um, but we do have it. And so what does this do? It is going to check everything out. It is gonna build node. Um, it's gonna install everything. Um, but uh, let's see. Oh, it goes in the back end. So this is specifically the stuff that we put in here and we can actually remove this. Um, and we actually need to CD into a conduit. Uh, we, man, we, this is, this is a mess. This is very interesting. This, this is exactly how projects go. This is exactly how digital transformations go, transmissions go. They go through this weird time where everything you do is gross and then they get better as you as you know, you get to certain places, but this feels super gross to me, um, but no, no problem. So we're gonna CD in a micro to conduit microservices um, slash conduit dash back and we're gonna CD into there. We're gonna do an NPM install and we are gonna do an NPM test and then we're gonna have a deploy step, but the deploy step is gonna be different here. Oh, actually, we don't even need to CD in anything because this is actually different. This is actually the checkout command. Um, 
we're not gonna need to CD into anything. We're gonna X this, we're gonna save that line. We're only gonna run NPM install and NPM test. And then we're gonna need to log in to staging host. Uh, I should I should just, uh, you know what I'm gonna do? What, how do you, how do you comment things out in, does YAML have commenting? I can't, I never, I never remember. It's, it, is it JSON that doesn't have commenting, but YAML does, I think. Um, and the key here is actually gonna be, we're gonna add a host line here and we're gonna hard code this really quick and do this as development. That pipelines, that media is gonna be the host. How are you doing? I don't want gift sub. Welcome to the channel. What's up, G Bone? Welcome, Git Project Org or Bit Project Org. Sorry, we're doing a little bit of Git. I got a little confused. Uh, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for the follow. And yes, Jason, no, Yemo, yes, got it. Wait, so where is the NPM I point to? So, um, great question. From my understanding, again, I'm not, I'm, I'm pretty new to, to GitHub Actions, but this first stage that we have here is the checkout stage. So this is the stage that actually checks out the repository. I'm 99% sure the work, the workspace for this, or like the, the working directory for this is inside of your repository. So it doesn't point anywhere. It's, it does it right. Like it's in the directory of the repository uh, that we're in. And now, because we're in micro, now that we've, have a poly repo, we don't need to CD into any directory because uh, this repository is the directory that we're gonna be using. And so I think that NPM install will just work fine, I hope. Um, and then it will deploy it to, let's see. Um, I don't think I need this. I actually don't think this if statement works, uh, but we're trying to learn how to do if statements here. Not a big deal. Um, I think everything else is fine. Um, and let's, you know, let's start a commit here. And uh, let's simply say, yeah, I'll just leave it as that, whatever. You know, it's one of the only commits here. Workflows, conduit front end. And so now let's see what happens with the actions. The actions are running. The little yellow dot says something is happening. You know, even if it's just queued, it is doing something. And that is exciting or it's about to do something, which means, you know, we've made something happen. And so the build process is happening. The CI and the CD are working together in harmony to, you know, make the world a better place here. Um, and so it's, it's just doing what we told us to do. It's really just like a script runner at this point. We're not doing anything fancy at all. We just want to see if this works. Um, but what's going to happen is even if this works, we didn't actually change the deploy step at all. So it's not going to do anything that we want it to do. Okay. It, it's it, like, it actually think it's going to pass but it's not going to do what we think it's going to do because the deploy step is still the same and that deploy step i think is just doing a git pull on master actually um interesting what is this doing yeah it's just sshing in um and where did it fail it failed on can't connect without a private ssh uh key or password I'm pretty sure the SSH key's in there, but not a problem, not a problem. We will fix this. How we fix this, let's do it from here. Now that we have this committed into our repository, let's simply do a pull, get all the things that we need. You see that file there? You see those 43 line changes? We have it, dot GitHub. And where I prefer to work for with it from here, GitHub workflows, npm publish dot YAML. All right, let's see what went wrong here. And we need to change this up anyway. So, you know, it seems weird. So it wouldn't log in development.pipelines.media seems like the correct host, Ubuntu. Oh, okay, so now here we go. This is the reason why it didn't work. Uh, the reason why it didn't work is because uh, we set this up in a completely different repository and, and each repository has its own set of secrets, okay? Um, we actually, we don't, yeah, we don't need to see the a conduit actually. We are, we're good to go there. It basically said, I cannot SSH into the uh, the system that you want to SSH into. Oh, I see this line here. You're right, we do need to move this. Um, but it said, I can't get into it. Why can't I get into it? I was like, oh, it seems weird. We set up everything last time. Uh, yes, we did, but that was in a completely different repository. So we actually need to set up our secret key 
inside of this repository. So let's go in here. I think I still have this key saved somewhere. Um, and I still need to swap it out, but you know, not worried about it right now. Um, I, I think it would be tough for you to copy it. Um, let's see. I think if I look at myself, uh, it's here. I never remember how many dots are correct. Uh, you know, you can see it. I'll, I'll swap it out. Not a big deal. These are, um, this key is only to log into the like five instances that we do have. And I think I need to add in one more line and I will do that. Um, but what we need to do is we need to go back to this repo, go to settings, go down to secrets and add a secret. We need to tell our applicant, we need to whisper, psst, psst, hey, psst. we need to whisper our secret to our repo so that it has it. And the secret secret's name needs to be key um, because that's what we called it. I think I need to have one more of these. I hope it's only one, maybe two, but uh, you know, actually let's see if this works. Trade down. Yeah, okay, I think I got it. All right, I think that's it. And we will save that. Now, if you feel like going through and typing that yourself to make to remake the key, great. Um, you're not gonna be able to do much with it. Um, because also these EC2 instances don't have anything weird. <laughs> I got you with the whisper. Hey, you know, were you, you, you trying to listen? You're trying to listen real close. All right, so key should be there now. And so now when you saw the lines here, um, when you see this kind of thing, uh, it's saying, hey, I'm gonna check this repository. I'm gonna check in the secrets to see if there's anything that matches this uh, this this key right here. So right, it's actually called key. Um, so that's weird, but it'll check for keys uh, with that. And then we actually don't need to do this. Let's um, let's see if we can get it right the first time. We might, we might be able to get this right the first time. And so right now, the thing is to build. Um, so, Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna CD into um, slash home slash Ubuntu slash conduit dash microservices slash uh, conduit backend. This is ah, this is gross, but it's okay. It's working. So we're gonna CD into there. We're gonna get pull. We're gonna cd dot dot, and so again, we're 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 iterating. We're gonna go back a directory. That's where the Docker Compose file is. We're gonna uh, sudo. Oh, this is terrible. But we're just gonna see what happens. We're gonna see what happens. Docker Compose build, and then we are going to sudo Docker Compose down and and sudo Docker compose up dash D. All right, so we literally are just sticking in commands, the same commands that we would have run to do this manually. That is where you can start. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying it's the, the best, the most efficient start. This is how you start to do these processes. This is how you start to learn them, start to see what's good and bad about the process. And you know, it gives you enough to start to work off so you can iterate through it. So these are the actual commands. I didn't look at the server. I think this is off of memory alone. Let's see if this works. How do I make sure this gets up there? Let's do a get status. Uh, let's get add. And so now we actually have a bunch of changes, a couple of changes here. So let's, uh, I, I didn't even say, I don't know why I said a bunch. We just have two changes. Uh, get commit dash M updated. Our message is gonna be that we updated uh, CI uh, actions YAML to uh, deploy with uh, deploy with Docker Compose. Sure, excellent. Now everyone knows what happened get oh man because i'm on the server itself um that's fine user.name aaron user.email just for fun uh it works it's because i'm on the server right now and you know the server is just what it is this is not how you should do it but you should you know just go ahead and do it uh for for now um just so we can get moving um, but let's see, what did I commit? 
and we'll do a git push. Uh, I don't have keys either. Not a problem though. It is gonna go whenever we push, it's gonna pick this up and it's gonna kick off a brand new build. Werewolf Dev, thank you so much for the Twitch sub. The tier one sub is good to have you. I appreciate the support, really do. Thank you very much. You should alias suit it to something else uh, for the, yeah. Uh, for this project, it'd be so much fun. We can, uh, yeah, what should we, what should we alias it to? I will alias it to almost whatever you tell me to alias it to. Um, it, if it is four letters or shorter, if you have me alias it to something else that's longer, obviously I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> um, but yes, if, if we, we should, uh, can you, can you do that? Can you actually, I don't even know if you can alias it to, it feels like it won't let you. Alias it to please, okay, please is a good one. I like that. Um, let's see. Um, I'm, I should put it in my VimRC, on my ZSHRC, or I guess this is BashRC for this. Uh, so it stays this way, um, slash other, where all my other alias is at. And I'll put it in, ah, there we go. Let me grab Yank. I don't, I don't wanna put it in there. I'll grab one of these. Yank, paste. Will this work? Will it pick up that with stuff after it? I don't know. Do it is four letters. I like do it. I like it, but uh, please came through first and I do actually like that. And so what if I do please docker PS. Oh, I didn't source it. Sorry. Source. Uh, bash RC. Nice. Please works. I like it. We will uh <laughs> now do it or now. I I, I man, I, see I I used to do all the cool stuff like that. I used to have like the best setups and have stuff like that. But then I went to a job. I went to a job where I had to do uh, a lot of things that I wasn't doing before and not having, I had like forgot to push up my, uh, all of my recent changes and stuff. And I like didn't have any of my stuff. And man, I felt this was, this was like my second job ever. And I, man, I was lost. I was like, I don't remember how to do anything because I had everything aliased. Like I was making my life so easy. I could do it now. Uh, cause I would remember it. And I also am not like at this point I can figure it out. <laughs> um, but yeah. I, I had so much stuff. Let's see. I like that. I like, I, I like that. You know, I'm not going to repeat it because I'm, I'm PG channel. I'm, I'm trying to keep it PG. It's okay. It's completely okay. If you all don't keep it PG, but I, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying my best, you know, we're trying to get some sponsorships out here. Okay. Um, so PG as I'm keeping it PG as possible, but I do agree. I would love to alias it to that. Uh, God X. I would try. I, I would do it. I like FFS. That's nice. My first, uh, my first job, I was a, I was a, I worked at a, um, a web hosting company as like a server, like help desk server stuff. Like I was help desk, but like my help desk was different from. I worked at a help desk position as an intern before that, and like this was like, I, I was doing server administration for web hosting customers, uh, basically. Um, they actually sat me down for like six months, paid me really crap money, but uh, they taught me a lot and I answered the phones, did a lot of, a lot of service restarts, a whole lot of service restarts uh, for sure. Um, okay, wait, so that was building and we didn't go see what it did. Let's see, actions. Oh, ho, 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 yeah, look at that green check mark. We need a little button that says we did it. We did it. I mean, I don't know if it actually did what we wanted it to do, but it did. It, it says it did it. Okay. And how, how do we, uh, how, how are we going to know for sure if it did what it was supposed to do? This is how we're going to do it. We are simply going to make a change. Uh, so development is still point of development. We're going to point development at prod right now. And we're going to do that right in the repository. So we're in the front end section here. Um, oh, wait, we put this in the wrong place. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. So we are doing front end. Well, okay. Here's the problem though. 
no this is good this is good everybody this is good why is it good um these the front end and the back end have the same deploy process they're both node applications uh and it's both an npm install and if it needs to be rebuilt uh the same process is going to have to happen with the uh up and down so this actually is a great thing let's push it to the back end and let's make a change to the back end uh the front end actually don't actually let's see if i don't know enough about the front end application yet to like make a visual change that's not going to break everything um so let me make it let's let's add this to the back end as well really quick and then uh we'll just we'll keep we'll keep rolling through and then we'll have two of our repositories basically finished and we can keep moving let's copy uh go ahead and add the raw from the front end. I don't know why I added it to that. I hate, I, I really, the flow to get back to your repositories is, is too many clicks. I swear it's too many clicks. I don't like it, but no big deal. Let's take GitHub workflows and we can, we can test it out here. We'll see if GitHub actions picks this up automatically for us. Um, I'm not gonna change. I'm not gonna actually do anything inside of GitHub. I'm simply gonna add this and let's like that'll teach us whether or not it picks it up automatically for us. So uh, I'm gonna go back to conduit backend. And here's what I'm gonna do because it already worked. Uh, I'm going to um, make the directory um, dot GitHub slash workflows. And inside of that GitHub slash workflows. I'm going to make a NP actually I have no idea what that file was called. Uh, I can call it whatever I want, but you know, I like I like a little bit of consistency NPM publish. Um, that's a solid. That's an okay name. I'm cool with that. NPM dot public NPM dash publish dot YML. Let me let me check. You know, YAML is the YAML spec, but a lot of people use YML. Let's check out what they give it. Uh, they give it YML, so I will call it YML as well. Both of them do work. Um, paste this in. Ooh, that, that worked just fine. Okay, so the, all of them are only deploying to Conduit backend. Um, I need to go back and change the front end to deploy uh, to Conduit front end to, to get pull on Conduit front end, but no big deal here. Um, excellent, 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 excellent. All right, so we'll do that really quick. And then what we'll do, um, we well, let's update this. Um, let's update in the public in the app.js. Let's change this to point at something else. Oh, that's the front end. That is the front end. So maybe I was trying to change that. My bad. Um, we still need to push this. We'll push this to make sure it works. Um, get add, get commit, dash m, added uh, actions. Actions file, whatever. Get push. Do better. Get com do do as I say, not as I do. Um, do better uh, commit messages than that. But it'll be fine. All right, support jobs really give you a good grounding for a huge bunch of Y concepts. I agree. I agree. So <laughs> support work is basically COVID. I mean, I did learn. I learned. I learned a lot. I did learn a lot there. Um, the scope of the problem with support jobs is generally, you know, depending on the tier you're at or whatever you you. Yes, you learn a wide range of concepts, but it also is in, you know, as as far as the industry goes, it's in a relatively narrow scope. Um, because you know, your customers are generally all doing very similar things. Uh, and so it was great. Um, I probably should have left a little sooner than I did. And I only stayed there for like a year, a little over a year and two or three months. Um, and I probably should have left, you know, th three or four months before I did. Um, cause I kind of got to the point where I was just coasting, um, uh, at, at, you know, at my nice little level one position making, uh, 
making like 36 i think i think i was making 36 000 driving from baltimore to northern va paying tolls uh to get there you know but it was fine i learned a lot i felt cool you know i would stay late and play my xbox because traffic was terrible and i didn't want to sit in traffic because i had a mustang and it, you know i was spending all of my money in gas uh but it, i learned a lot there and i learned even more taking that experience to a place that worked on more enterprise level uh similar role but more enterprise level things um so i, I got to be exposed to a lot more problems uh for sure all right so we push that up let's see if that's building but then we can just change something on the front end and so i was doing it right and then i confused myself i was doing it right then i confused myself and let's see if actions pick that up this is conduit front end the conduit back end pick up a github action it did and it failed that's good uh that's good because we don't have uh one um the npm install failed so that's a that you know that's a different problem oh no the the, the test failed the test actually failed that's fine it should have skipped it it should have skipped it but that's okay we'll figure out why i didn't do that let's go back to the front end and make sure it's, our deploy is actually working right the way that we do that is let's change the url for the front end uh we're gonna change the source uh agent js and let's change this to just pipelines.media uh which is a valid url to so the production one that is open and available get commit um dash m changed uh back end url for testing and test in not testing yep and then get push Ugh, i hate doing this set up keys everybody set up set up ssh keys forget don't be typing in your password all the time because that's whack all right that's going let's see if it builds so now what should happen is if it deploys properly and what we can also do is we can watch uh please docker ps uh we can please watch docker ps i don't think that's gonna work uh i want to i want to see if the uh the status is gonna update uh to when it was deployed um that's one way we could watch it and the other way that we could watch it is obviously um inside of here actions change that url for testing let's see if this gets on out there test passed even though they didn't pass they just we you know we we did the we did the non-blocking test break which you shouldn't do but uh we had to because this is not our this is all someone else's stuff all right get on ssh in there and work for us check that out look at this created 25 27 seconds ago uh we got a brand new container uh that is running for us um now whether or not that's the right container what's happening that one's gone now so i don't even know what that container was but you know we're just we're just we're seeing what's happening oh that's probably that this actually running this running thing um the ssh container i guess i actually have no idea what that was it was something let's see are these gonna restart are we gonna get it down here or is this gonna fail Still running. And where are we going? Come on, it's, it's moving pretty slow. But I'm gonna blame that on uh, actions on GitHub and not on the system. What is it doing? Oh, it's building, it's building. That's what it is doing. It's doing a Docker Compose build. All right. 
and then let's see you deserve more than 36 dollars. no bueno uh well i mean well 30 yeah 36 000 it, 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 hey it was a good job at that time uh this was when i was 22 22 and you know it was right like i was still i was still taking classes um right when i was 22 and it worked it worked for me i appreciate that uh, but it, it worked for me and like i said i almost doubled it when i left there to go to the next place i worked there for a year a year a year and a couple months a year or two months and i almost doubled it when i went to the next place and you know you just you just follow the ladder the hardest part i tell everyone you know if you're someone who's looking at this just trying to get in the industry the hardest part is the first step like the first step is the hardest part the first job someone get someone to give you that chance is the hardest part and then after that it uh it gets it gets uh like super it can get super easy if you embrace the 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 process um you know having the the experience on the resume is all the help in the world um and then it's up to you to get to get decent at interviewing you don't have to be great just get decent at interviewing um which is uncomfortable like i, I tell people all the time like I, I went on hundreds of interviews. I really like when I didn't want a job, I just like when I was comfortable with my job, like I would just get a job, I would just go on, I would just send my resume everywhere and I would take phone interviews and stuff. I had lots of terrible interviews. I, I've had awful interviews, but you get you get more and more comfortable with them. You get okay with when the interviews go bad, you don't get so flustered anymore. Uh, and it was, it, it, it really was very helpful. Um, like to the, it was so helpful to the point that after my like, after my third role or so, my third or fourth role, um, I think, I think in the past, so all right, I worked at Fearless for four years. I, I would say in the last six years or so, um, I would say that any interview that I actually went to an in-person interview for, um, I received an offer from every single one. Uh, and I, I'm, I, I think that I am a, 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 I think I'm a good troubleshooter. Um, I think I have a wide range of knowledge. Um, but I do not think I'm an amazing engineer. Um, I, like I'm certainly not amazing, not amazing enough to where everyone's offering me a position. Um, uh, but I think that's, that that's attributed to, um, the amount of interviews that I went on. And again, I tell, I say it all the time. We gotta learn how to talk about this stuff. I'm really good at, at talking about what I know. And uh, that's super helpful for me. And I'm 30, I'm 30 right now. Um, I started my career. I did start my career when I was 18 though. Um, I started I started with help desk roles when I was 18 uh, with the government actually I actually was fortunate enough to get a government internship um, and I, I was really doing uh, help desk and systems I was I was a systems administrator there like a internal systems administrator I wasn't really doing a lot of large-scale server stuff but yeah so that's why I always put at the beginning of the thing that I have about 10 years of experience I mean I have about 12 years total of like tech experience like we were you know I was doing sound drivers and i was really i was really getting hands-on into windows 7 like i was getting deep into windows 7 troubleshooting things and doing stuff then uh back then but um like what we're doing now i have about nine about nine years of experience like even before that server job that i had at 22 i was doing uh i was managing some systems and stuff uh because i actually kept that internship i kept that internship for two years until i was 20 or 21 and then i had another internship at uh, another like healthcare startup thing or something like that uh, but yeah the grind paid off in bulk yeah it for sure my first programming job ten dollars an hour did that for years small raises then doubled yeah at 100 it, it, that's exactly how it worked for me as well is having a ts clearance as valuable uh in devops and sre as is in sysadmin networking areas um i think it's becoming more valuable depending on where you live like so i am in the baltimore area oh i'm in baltimore uh, but i'm from the dc area so like we're right along that corridor all of the you know, all NSA is right down the street and stuff. Uh, and that can be phenomenally valuable. It can be phenomenally valuable, but I think it that depends on where you live. Uh, I like, honestly, I would prefer to do DevOps and SRE work outside of of a clear space. Uh, to be honest, uh, mostly for the uh, for the get the tools and things that you get to, to use. But um, that's 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 just my experience, at least. Um, but you can make stupid money. You can make really crazy money having a TS uh, and doing DevOps, SRE, like cloud work. Um, like they they will just, they throw money at you. I've considered it a few times, uh, but again, not my, 
not my passion you know you, you can chase I, i've chased the money in my career before and it can you know you get <laughs> your there's a lot of things that are more important than money i know i'm saying that you know i understand that i'm saying that from a place of privilege i've i've worked in places that have paid me what i wanted to be paid um but there will be a point i'm telling you chase i, I encourage you to chase the money a bit but keep the other things in mind uh oh <laughs> everyone talks about work-life balance and all that stuff like your your peace your peace is worth is worth everything um i i walked i walked out of a place uh, after telling uh, uh I, basically uh the 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 scrum master or the project lead uh had had continuously yelled it wasn't yelling at me um, i was actually waiting for my clearance to go through so i actually couldn't touch any systems at the time i was just kind of there uh and uh i i had never been in a place that was super toxic before and where like he was like yelling at grown men like dudes who were way older than him like they were children like yelling at them at the time i'm 23 24 uh, and I think it was 24, 25. And he's like, he's like literally yelling at people. And I asked, I told him, I talked to him before about it. I was like, hey, we're adults. Like, you know, I, I personally don't want to be talked to that way. So, you know, I mean, I would appreciate it. You know, if that's not something he did, he was like, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Like, you know, sometimes I get like emotional, all this other stuff, whatever. And he proceeded to do it one time after the team did something. The team did do something wrong, but uh, just to like, look good he did it in front of some like higher ups and stuff and it didn't sit well with me at all i also didn't like that job uh i was sitting it was for a contractor it was a government contractor uh i was working in the NOAA building so national oceanic and atmospheric administration i had a lot of jobs <laughs> um but we were working in a room with no uh we we're working in a room with no uh, windows and stuff and i couldn't i couldn't handle it i like i couldn't take that from him and i was like man i'm leaving i'm walking out of the door right now because I like I I really felt like I was gonna hit this guy and I'm I'm a, I'm a very kind person I really thought I was gonna hit this dude and I so I I, I left and I, I guess I thought I was gonna come back the next day or something and I just I went to the car show actually me, my friend called me it's funny my friend called me and he was like yo you trying to go to the car show like in the middle of the day like right when I left like he had no idea that I left and I was like yeah I am trying to go to the car show broke I was broke at that time really broke and i just i didn't come back but i had a job within the week i had a brand new job within the week making more money and it was fully remote pretty wild story actually uh things worked out it could have been that could have been really bad uh but luckily luckily that worked out but yeah your 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 happiness is is key i worked at, i worked at one or two other places that weren't toxic but just uh really stole from my soul like really really hurt me um it's really weird how that happens. So just just keep that in mind. Money import money is important. That's why I always say we'll talk about money here uh, pretty often. Money is not off the table for us to talk about. I think you should actually like no we're not just passionate about tech like we're passionate about tech yes you know maybe but we're here to make you want to make money uh, you you want to be passionate about that you want to learn the stuff so that you can earn income uh, and do the things that you want to do in life so money is important don't be afraid we need to remove the stigma of talking about money uh in tech or in, in any field to be honest um all right so i think that worked up eight minutes that did work uh and how can we be sure it did finish we've got some new things here and let's check this out let's check out uh development that pipelines that media global feed refresh it global feed this is production so development is pointed at production our pipeline the pipeline that we created for this microservice is actually deploying what we wanted to deploy that's phenomenal um that worked exactly as it was supposed to work so if you should update any of the front end code it will deploy that front end code if you should update any of the back end code let's make sure our back end set up properly um i definitely misjudged how many things we had to do tonight um but no big deal um we'll 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 make sure we can condense everything if not tonight into next week um so this needs to go into conduit back end so front end should be going to conduit front end um let me make sure that is right dot github workflows npm publish mm, interesting very interesting Huh, I'm actually surprised, it actually shouldn't have worked, but it did work. 
wonder why it works oh okay 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 actually it's so perfect hmm why did that work oh it worked because we're changing the stuff we're actually this is dumb uh it worked that see and this is where this is where dumb problems arise this is where dumb problems arise so that shouldn't have worked in the way that it did and it would not have worked if we were deploying from our local computer but we are making these changes on the system that our build process is deploying to so what was happening actually was um it was not pulling the new code it was not pulling the new code that i was telling it to pull um i was making the change um and because the whole process does a docker build does a docker build and then a, a, a down and then up it did actually fix this for us uh but i did find the problem the, there was a problem here uh and now it shouldn't matter now it should work um with the time left uh we're gonna do one we're gonna do two things really fast um so we have conduit back end working conduit front end we're actually gonna put nginx in a container real fast um and then real quick i just want to talk about uh we'll talk deeper into this going into next week this is actually good because when we get to the infrastructure as code piece uh we're gonna be so in depth with this stuff we can still dive into the stuff that we didn't get to talk about tonight um because again i do want everyone to be able to go see the um the debates i think it's important for everyone to um to at least go take a listen um you know figure out figure out how you're gonna support your own future um because we're all gonna have to support our own future that's why i'm glad y'all are here uh learning this stuff but but um i want to talk to you a little bit about the data so yes we have mongo mongo is not running as a service yet but we will get mongo running as a service not a big deal right now but data in terms of ci pipeline so right now what is our ci pipeline doing our ci pipeline is um you know we have these microservices and if we would like things to uh we're doing kind of a feature branch uh git flow style uh git flow github or, or GitLab flow style workflow to where we're starting with a development branch and so uh you know our our, our engineer uh creates a feature branch to develop what they want to develop off of the development branch gets to the development branch. Once they merge something into the development branch, it goes to the development server. All right, great, looks good. Testing there, everything looks good. When we're ready to go further than that, uh, the things that are in development get merged up again into staging and they get into the staging branch and they get tested. Uh, they automatically get deployed out to staging. Great. When those are ready to go out to production, those get merged up into master. So master is the production branch. So that is the general workflow. This is something that is very difficult to do with data in the way that we have it with static data. So generally this is not always true uh generally it depends on two things one uh is th the biggest thing is does the d does the data that's being input is it added to support what you've developed so is the data there to support what you've developed or is data put in directly into production and the things that you developed are, are to support that data so it's where the flow goes and that matters a lot that matters uh that matters a whole lot um because think about things like um like again a company like this um we are uh the the amount of articles the are the types of articles and things that are in our system uh don't necessarily matter to us as developers for this system or to our developers for this system. Uh, the content is going straight into production. Uh, people are signing up for accounts and they're deploying articles straight to production. You all were able to go to, to conduit, you know, dot pipe or uh, pipelines.media and you can sign up for an account right now and you can publish an article. So that data gets saved into production. It gets saved at the end of the pipeline. The data exists there development at least in this instance can happen uh, without that data that data is not necessary uh, or all of that data at least is not necessary for us to do anything we can use dummy data we can use subsets of that data um and so generally uh, there are two there are two flows for this in situations like that code moves upwards so code moves from development uh, you know, up through your pipelines, up through your different environments to get to production. So that's the way code moves. And and then data will be moved 
backwards data will, will will flow backwards um to support that process so uh data will you know sometimes it'll be you know on schedules or whenever you need it will be synced down to staging and down to uh down to your uh development servers and say i mean and data will move that way because the data is more so there for support rather than uh that data being the actual thing that makes the code work so that's usually how that stuff works um or, or, or that's how things work when the data is like that when data is being put into prize so these are typically things like content management systems like wordpress or something like that where people are just sticking data right in there um now they may have their own workflow there are ways to move data upwards but a lot of times that's how that works um and then the other way is sometimes um the data that exists in the system um is there to support the 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 features that you're developing and um and those uh, a lot of times those things will move forward in the same way that the code does now that data doesn't usually exist within uh source control um but there will usually be some type of paradigm that you set up because it'll be up to you uh to figure out how that data gets moved uh, from beginning to end and it may be it may be something to where you don't have to automate every single thing It may be something where you say hey the types of data that we need to push upwards are configuration changes that don't happen very often at all so uh, rather than actively setting up a pipeline because they happen once every year or something like that uh, maybe you know to ensure the consistency of things we will do them manually when the time comes you know i mean there, everything's a trade-off that might be the option for how your project is structured how it's manned um you know you know how many people are on it so you got to think about some of those things um but uh there are some cool ways uh there are a lot of tools that have been created to help you move data upwards to do database migrations and things like that to be able to automate those processes another way though we are using a, a no sql database a document store what's great about something like mongo uh, is that you can actually export this data to json files to to simple text json files if you like and so you can actually version control this data if you want depending on the size uh which is good it's going to be fine um not the most ideal way to do this um but it's a good way to do it um it, it is a way that you can do it and so because you can uh, dump this data as files uh you can start to manage this type of data the same way that you manage your code base uh, which is pretty interesting um but there's a lot of different ways to do it data is it can be finicky um data can be difficult to work with um and again, sometimes it can operate in the exact opposite way that your code operates. They can be doing a little pathway like this, uh, depending on how the setup is. Um, and now that like data is, it's kind of everything. So the way the data flows in each system is gonna be different. So we're gonna set up something uh, a little bit farther along with uh, how to do database dumps and include this in our process. But I did wanna to touch on that a little bit tonight. Now we're gonna do the quickest Nginx uh, set up in the world right now, and this is how we're gonna do it. Conduit, Nginx proxy, is simply, doesn't have anything in it. All it has in it, in here, is this default file. What is this default file? All this default file does is it simply proxy passes to localhost. This is the Nginx configuration that allows it, right now, when you go to pipelines.media, or development.pipelines.media, if we did not have this in place, you would have to go to development.pipelines.media colon 4100 to be able to see this application. And this does in fact work. What's up, Ty Libby? How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. I'm doing really good. Um, I got my shirts, my shirts came in. I'm excited about that. Um, got a lot of stuff done today, but I'm doing good. I'm doing good, albeit a little bit tired. I will tell you all, I hate Wednesdays and Thursdays, uh, but not because of anything you're thinking of, specifically because of my workouts. Uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays are uh, are like deadlift and and squat days and like leg days and like and so I actually don't do any cardio on those days and it still crushes me every single time every single time uh that's great I'm glad uh how do you get one I will I will have a link for you all very shortly on how to get them you know pick one up if you if you want one um but you know it just we'll, we'll throw them up there I, I got them mainly because like i told you all i have interns now i actually have interns paid interns all right you know and that makes me feel good about myself uh because you know i'm 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 i was i'm able to pay some interns this is really nice um and we're gonna do some cool stuff and i need to make sure they had shirts uh so that's you know they're gonna get taken care of first
but yeah i yeah I'll, I'll have links up for those and stickers uh probably within the week um so yeah just trying to try to knock that stuff out of there arms cardio yeah see i i i, I prefer look i love leg stuff my legs are strong i like that stuff but they just every time it just takes a little bit out of me and it's really annoying but this is what nginx does it, it just proxies so that you can get to it over on port 80 no problem without it if i shut down nginx right now which i'm about to do thank you um please i'll keep using that service nginx stop and if i do that then eventually it will stop and now no longer will you be able to just go to development.pipelines.media it will say the site cannot be reached that doesn't mean the application is down. It just means Nginx is down. I can still go to colon 4100 to get there. Um, but what we can do really quick is set this back up in a container. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna update um, conduit Nginx proxy. Um, uh, I guess I have to put a Docker file in there. Um, Oh no, this is not my, this is not my, um, my thing. So Vim, conduit, Nginx proxy, um, and we will call, I mean, Docker file, not call, I call it, it's gotta be called Docker file. So from, um, I think there's an Nginx latest, um, we can go with that for now. Um, and what we can do, and I'm purely, I am, I have, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I, I know how to use Nginx very well. Um, don't know the last time I used the Nginx container like this, uh, but I think all I gotta do is do a copy and copy default into um, into slash Etsy slash Nginx slash sites available. Yeah, and I think it's already has a sim link for this. I think that's all I have to do. I actually don't think I need to, uh, to override the run command or anything like that or the entry point. I think that's it. And here's how we're gonna here we're gonna test. Here's how we're gonna test it. Typo, always a typo. Let's see what it is. Misspelled. Available. That is correct. Available. Available. Av wait. Avail. Able. There we go. Sites available. I think that's where it goes. I'm pretty sure that's where it goes. Uh, but we are gonna see. And I misspelled this, you know, it's okay. You know, we're, this is not an English class uh, and we don't have autocorrect. Okay, we're, we're in a world where we're used to autocorrect and we don't have it here on our, in Vim, unfortunately. So yeah, it's okay, not a big problem at all. All right, so here's what we're gonna do is we are gonna do a, just to see, cause I have no idea. I did no research on this. I didn't go to Docker Hub or anything like that. I'm just going off of what I think that I know because uh, you know, you gotta try it out sometimes. And we'll do just a test build Docker, please Docker build uh, dash T Nginx test um dot all right and it's going to pull the latest nginx I'm gonna copy our file in and let's try to run it really quick uh docker please docker run uh dash itd dash p uh 80 80 and nginx underscore test so this command is just a docker run command uh that's gonna write it in the background i actually don't need the i or the t just the d um and i'm gonna map port 80 to port 80 because that's what's gonna run on by default and please docker ps not that one excuse me and it is running, so this is good. And if I mapped it properly, this should now work. Um, Development.pipelines.media. All right, okay, so this is good. It, Nginx is running, but it's not giving us what 
we believe it is supposed to be giving us. So here's what we're gonna do really quick to know. Uh, I, have, I don't know where we're supposed to copy this. I could do a couple of different things. I could go to the actual uh, the Docker hub to see where I'm supposed to copy it to. But you know, I am, uh, I like to do things uh, in, in more complicated ways. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to, um, I'm going to connect to that container. I'm gonna look around really quick. So please docker exec dash it uh what is this one called hardcore poitrus poitrus uh slash bin slash bash almost done i'm about to get you guys out of here so you can see this debate i want to see the debate as well cd slash etsy ls cd slash nginx Ah, I see there's no Etsy Nginx. Um, okay, all right, that's that's uh, interesting. So let's see where this is. Let's actually look at, um, well, let's look at the Docker entry point. Vim probably doesn't work, or does it? Yeah, it doesn't. Let's see if I can see what's in the entry point. The SH, ugh. I was hoping I could quickly see where the configuration was. It's not empty, entry point D. Okay. Let's look at, let's go to Docker Hub really quick. Really quick, really, really, really quick. Let's get through it. Hub.docker.com, Nginx. Where can I copy this to? It should tell us where to copy it to. Um, how to use this image, content, complex configuration, go to host path. Oh, that's, that's where I, Etsy Nginx, I don't see anything along this path. Um, Etsy, oops, I'm dying over here, let's see. Etsy Nginx. Yeah, that's where it should be, nginx.conf. Did I, oh, maybe I didn't copy it in as the right name um, or like, <clears throat> well, but like, why didn't it, uh, CD slash ETC, CD, nginx, oh wait, now, now it exists. Okay, CD. Sites available, LS. Okay, well, what's what, what about sites enabled? Oh, okay, it, it's not using this pair. Yeah, it was there. I just, maybe I put a slash there or something. Um, okay, so this doesn't, this is not using the sites available, sites enabled uh, set up by default. Maybe it will be if I actually add a sites enabled um, or I can just put this in the, um, I think I just put it in the conf.d um, or I can add it to, I can also just take this Nginx conf. I can put it in the default Nginx conf if I want as well. Uh, this is not using the default paradigm that Nginx like normally uses. Um, so a couple different ways I can do that. I can just, like I said, I can just steal this Nginx config and put what I want in it. Oh, it is actually going to do an include on conf.d. So I will stick this into that file uh and i think this will work so here's what we'll do uh real quick we'll we'll modify it in itsy nginx conf.d all right we will uh vim our docker file we will copy this to conf.d uh slash uh conduit.conf so it's gonna look for anything in there with a with a slash with a dot conf ending, and I actually think this might work. So let's try to build again. Let's uh, please Docker PS, uh, please Docker stop, um, hardcore Poitras. All right, and let's, uh, we built it, right? Yeah, we did build it. And we are gonna do another run. All right, so it's already back up. 
Let's actually just go to the site just to see if it worked. All right, so now we get a bad getaway. That's good. Um, so yeah, I'm comfy. It, it usually works locally for me, but I tried to tab just now. It usually works, uh, but this on this server it doesn't. But on my local computer, it seems to work just fine. Um, okay, so we are getting Nginx, and it's trying to, it's trying to proxy back. So great. Um, and the reason why it's probably failing um, is because it is probably looking locally. And so this probably also has to do um, with the host networking. And so we shouldn't have to do this. We can bind the ports. We can do all the things that eric.dev uh, gave to us, which are really great ideas, but no big deal. I actually think this is working just fine. Um, uh, and there's a couple things we can do to check check that we can look at the logs and stuff But to save time what we're gonna do really quick is we're gonna go back because I'm pretty sure it is working It's just trying to reach out to its own port 4100, which is not this port 4100 And so what I can do is I can do this Docker compose. Let's add it to the Docker compose really quick and we're gonna say um, We're gonna add in uh, Let's add a new service and just call it proxy. And make sure I'm on the right levels. Why is it build dot slash conduit conduit slash nginx slash uh, dash proxy. So it's going to build in that directory. And then all it's going to do is expose. Uh, it's going to expose port eight. Ah, oh, this is gross. Like default them is kind of some booty a little bit, just a little bit of booty ports colon. Uh, let's go 80 colon 80. All right. And so this is going to spin up our Nginx proxy for us as well. Um, and it's going to build it and all the other stuff as well, but, um, allow for the connection, but we need to add one more line. Uh, the same thing we did below because we're proxying to a, a, another service here on this machine. Um, we need to also do a uh, network mode. Network mode is host, which I don't like to do, but I'm there's yeah, that's what we're doing for now. And let's see if this works. So our build actually are again. Dark Compose build, we'll have it do what it needs to do. And then we will do a down. And I'm actually surprised it didn't give me some crap for this. Um, Cause sometimes, well, I guess I didn't update any of the main services, but Docker Compose can be annoying sometimes if you forget to pull it down. Before you make updates to the Docker Compose file, it will uh, not let you easily pull down the services. Cause it'll say, hey, this doesn't match. And I don't know what to do, but uh, you know, it's fine. Up. Let's see if this works. So we can do a sudo docker compose PS. Make sure we got some containers running and the microservice proxy broke. Huh? Why did it break? Why did it break? Uh, it probably broke because of the entry point. Um, okay. Um, one second. I don't think well, I should have just stayed up. It should have just ran as a daemon because I'm pretty sure it does that by default. I don't think I need to put that at the bottom. Environment ports. Uh, listen. What is. Do I need to change the. I don't think I need to change it. Let me just see. Docker compose nginx. Uh, let's just see if I have to do anything special. I don't think I have to do anything special. You can use Docker compose logs to service. Yeah, um, I I think it's I think it's coming up fine. I think um I might have to add in um. Oh, I need to do that with the uh. I think it's just log. 
Well, you can do log slash F, but it's not gonna uh, proxy emergency address already in use. Okay, that makes perfect sense actually. So I don't need to do anything. It is because we already have a container running. Thank you, I should have checked that. That's again, that's what comes from rushing and going to, and, you know, not letting my mind think through. Uh, so thank you very much. This is why I love you all. Um, and so I'm gonna please Docker PS. I thought I stopped it though. I didn't stop it about a minute ago. That's the front end. That's the back end. Uh, well, 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 well Nginx to oh, Nginx that's is running. Uh, so Docker stop. Uh, amazing. Yeah, I wish I could tab complete, but I can copy and paste even though I can't tab complete. Um, copy paste. All right, and then I can do an R down, and then I can do an. Are up. Also, I, I've gotten messages about, I need to stop doing that. I need to, like, when there are errors, uh, very commonly, I will just spit out what it is and keep moving along really fast. Uh, I can reckon, like, I've run into these errors so many times that I instantly know what the problem is. Uh, that is what, that is what, um, that is what experience does. Um, like, I've seen people, like, people, like, if I ask me, like, giving me a timestamp to the video and, like, hey, you, like, you saw this error and then you looked at it for two seconds and then you fixed it. Like, how did you know what that was? And it was just, it's purely because I've seen it 2000 times. Address already in use. Whenever you see uh, address already in use, that means that port is uh, already consumed. The port that this is trying to run at is already consumed. We know we're trying to run Nginx. Uh, you know, the proxy over here is what we're using. That means Nginx is already running or port 80, you know, is already consumed by something. I know we were just testing. We fixed it. So when I do that, I'm sorry, I will do my best to start uh, stopping for a second and talking about the error um, because it is very useful when you do see that. Um, all right, now everything's up. And now, Booyah. Booyah development is working fine with the three of these microservices working together um, and we could put in, um, we can we can actually move, we can actually move the exact same, um, yeah, let's just do it. We can move the exact same thing uh, from the other repos. Like if I just copy dash R dot dot slash um, conduit uh, dash front end, not dot dot, I didn't need to go backwards. I'm in this directory already front end dot github and i can copy that into conduit nginx proxy and i can go into conduit nginx proxy and i can modify dot github workflows uh we'll change this from npm publish dot yaml to uh nginx publish because it's not npm the name doesn't matter at all and wow what what just happened here? Vim.github workflows npm publish. Oh, that was dumb. That was really stupid. I'll change the name in here. Uh, what I need to do is I need to go up here and I need to change uh, uh, FF. There we go. And C dollar sign. I'm making this harder than I need to. Um, conduit Nginx dash proxy and now this will work the same way that the other ones work um get status you can type part of the container id and that works too yep that's yes i just learned i learned that relatively recently phenomenal best thing ever i think we talked about that during the uh we did a container series called um called contained um and so everyone if you do a please docker ps as long as the id um the same way that uh, tab completion works uh, if i wanted to reference one of these containers uh if i typed in like docker stop e it would catch this it would know that this is the one that i'm talking about you just have to do enough spaces to make it unique and it will catch it it's a really good tool uh i really like it i like i said i just don't do a lot of individual container management anymore so i always forget about it but that absolutely is a great tip on company it's it's a great it's the best tip uh i i didn't know about it for a very long time all right so get status get not statsu just that, not stats, status, 
get add both of them get commit dash m added actions to uh nginx and we'll push that All right, Lord Luso, thank you so much for that follow. Uh, what's up, Lysand Rock? Uh, Julen, Jul Arna, Jul Nerat. I tried it. Shaky Noodle, good to have you. Wisdoms, welcome. Uh, Isma, welcome. Uh, Pats, uh, Patska, welcome. Mendelator, welcome to the channel. Friendly Frosty Nine, it is so amazing to have all of you here. Uh, sorry, I didn't give you a shout out when you showed up. Hopefully, you all are still around but we are basically done today um we have more to do to kind of get this into a stable space but it's okay because we are work we're going to be moving into the complete infrastructure as code implementation of this um for the next two weeks that's why we have two weeks for infrastructure as code uh because there's going to be a lot of moving around and shifting of what we are doing uh so that's you know that's uh yeah, that's that's what we're gonna be doing. So all these things work. Let's let's check this out. Um, there's also some stuff we need to do to ch allow it to change between environments based on the branch. But let's just confirm that the Nginx proxy action is building. It's gonna fail on deploy. Why is it gonna fail on deploy? You can see this little X here. It did fail. Uh, all the, all checks have failed. Uh, it failed. Actually, we do need to change this um the reason why we need to change it is because this is not an npm build so it went to go do npm tests and it failed and we don't need to do an npm test we need to do uh let's we need to do something a little different here um we won't do it now but uh nginx has a way for you to test the validity of the conf um of the configuration uh and so i think we're gonna have to basically add to this to install nginx check for the validity of the configuration file. And that's gonna be all the testing that we need uh, for this Nginx thing. And then we gotta remove this Nginx install in NPM test or uh, NPM install in, in NPM test. Uh, Cause that's not what we're gonna be doing with this at all. Um, uh, no, nah, I gotta do it. I gotta do it right now, real quick. Just, I gotta try it. I'm gonna give it one go. We get one shot at this and then we're out of here. One shot. Do not miss your chance to blow an opportunity it only comes once in a lifetime. So just, you better lose yourself in the music, okay? The moment you own it, you better never let it go. Man, you, only get, you know, we're about to start over again with you only get one shot. Let's uh, delete it. Let's delete it. Let's, uh, uh, let's undo, oh, let's actually undo, undo. Let's actually change this to, uh, sudo apt update uh, and, and sudo apt install nginx i think the way that you run um mom spaghetti code i love it that that is it uh, i think the way that you run an nginx check is to do sudo nginx dash t and then and then the the, the where the file lives so let's check that out real quick um on the server uh actually we're on the server now and so etsy slash well i actually don't even think i need to specify where it is but let's check in a second what happens if i type in nginx this, this nginx need to be running or sudo or please okay so you just run nginx dash t uh so i'll do sudo nginx dash t doesn't really matter where you are um i think you can be anywhere i think um, at the nginx nginx.conf yeah okay um but let me see something if i do at the nginx nginx.conf slash at the nginx uh um uh, sites available because that's where i have it locally on this computer uh and default invalid option you can't do that maybe you have to pass in a sometimes it's dash c directive not allowed here configuration oh so that one's like it's failing in server directive not allowed here oh man so it's actually failing the nginx test but that is how you would do it so i'm just gonna set that up um and it might work for the comp file uh, actually so you know we're gonna 
you know, our one, we're gonna one shot it. It's gonna, it, it's likely gonna fail. We had a 10% chance of making it past first try, but you know, we have to take those chances. Dash C, oh, actually, no, dash C slash, uh, huh. I actually don't think I need to do this. I think I just, we'll just do this for now because, because I think it'll, I think it will follow the includes, I think for actual comp files. I think it will, if it doesn't, that's fine. And that's all we're gonna do. Uh, so we're gonna do an add. We're gonna do a commit. All right, peace out, Todd Libby, we're out of here as well. Um, same commit message, terrible thing to do, but we need to go. So mastermind, let's get it up there. All right, so what did we do today? Authentication failed because I typed in my password wrong. I wish it would have gave me two chances. All right, so what did we do today? All we did today was we took what we did learn last time and our conversion to poly repo meant we also needed to now modify our services uh, to have their own CI pipelines. Why do we need to have their own CI pipelines? Because the CI pipeline originally was tied is tied to the repository and that's kind of how ci pipelines work uh they were tied to the repository there are ways where you can make it not tied to an individual repository these are sloppy and these are uh yeah they're sloppy excuse me that's gross I would not do that. Um, and so what we needed to do was set up an entire pipeline for each of these. And that is what we did tonight. We took the original way of doing things and we modified the entire deployment process. So no more did we just log in and pull down the code. Uh, we're actually using Docker now and we actually are implementing uh, a use case for Docker Compose here. And uh, we're using Docker Compose to uh, pull down new code, uh, build new images and deploy those updates uh, via our build script. And so we were able to also get Nginx now as a containerized uh, item. The next piece we're gonna have to do is also get uh, Mongo as a containerized item. This will make it easier. Uh, this will make our configuration easier when we get to the code piece. Um, and yeah, and all we're gonna be doing next week um, is we are going to be taking all of that um, learning how to take the entire infrastructure. So we'll probably be using Packer to build the base image with the things that we need. Sounds like all we're gonna need is Docker, but we'll see when we get there. Uh, there might be some other options there as well. Uh, we're gonna be learning how to do infrastructure as code. Uh, we're gonna do some stuff with Ansible. We don't need to, um, but we're gonna do some stuff there for practice. We're gonna learn, we're gonna basically learn about configuration management tools and so that you can understand the differences between a CM tool and a, um, and a like an infrastructure provisioning tool like Terraform. Um, and then we'll spend most of the, that time learning Terraform. So if you went through hoist already, uh, this is going to be a lot of setting that up. But uh, this time though, it's gonna be focusing on uh, configuration of, of multi-environment pieces. So we have these three environments here. Uh, how do you make Terraform work for multiple environments? How do you manage different sets of credentials, different sets of connection strings? How do you do things like that? And how does it fit into the automatic workflow of your CI pipeline? So that's what we'll be doing. And yeah, so come back for that. It also for Decoded, uh, tomorrow we are still working on uh, data structures. So we'll be doing, you know, uh, tomorrow we'll be doing some um, hash tables and some other things, uh, knocking out some of the other stuff, uh, other common data structures before we move into uh, implementing some of those things with sorting and searching algorithms the next two following weeks. So that's it. A lot of information. I'm, we're missing the debate. I'm sorry I held you for that long. Thanks for sticking around. Everyone, have a great night. Go relax, go listen to what you gotta listen to. Um, get some food, do whatever you gotta do. Hope to see you back tomorrow. If not, I'll see you back on Monday for more pipelines and it'll be very, very exciting. Who are we going to raid this evening though? Because you know, even though, you know, got something to do, we do have to absolutely go over and give someone a little itty bitty raid here who's in science and technology tonight. Raid the debate, is, that, is it streaming? If it's streaming, we're absolutely raiding the debate. Uh, um, is it streaming on here? Ah, yes, well, there are people watching the, oh. Well, there are people watching the debate, so we are gonna actually stream uh, store, Story Mode Bay. That's who we're going, we're going to see Story Mode Bay. I know nothing about Story Mode Bay, but that's where we're headed right now. And we'll say hello when we get there. Story. I only know about Story Mode Bay because they're on the homepage of Twitch. 
and we're out of here and nope no no we're not out of here what did i do wrong slash raid oh no 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 slash raid there we go story that type in raid room story mode bay yeah what did i do wrong Okay, that, that time it worked. Uh, thank you so much, Metalhead, for the follow. Also, fl Fly Rocks, welcome as well. Good to have you, even though we're out here, out of here now. I appreciate you coming through. Let's go watch this debate.